Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Say Report. I'm your host, Devin Decker, and joining me, my host, companion, Siege and Sarawick, um, right before we started recording. There's no reason to bring this up, but I feel like we should. We were talking about the Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Code of the West. The Code of the, yes, of the, the West. The Wild West, C-O-W, short for Code of the West, Boys of Moo Mesa. Wild and, West Code of the West. I don't know why it's the Code of the West. I love it. Uh, Ryan Brown, uh, he worked with the TMNT guys, and then he made his own anthropomorphic species. Um, and Seijin was confirming with me, this is one of the reasons why we were talking about it, that is like space radiation that mutates them. And he was... But, but I, I could have sworn that it was specifically cow, like space cow radiation. Like it is, it is bovine in nature, the radiation. Which makes sense because it turns them into cows. But then there are other things that get turned into things that are not cows. But that was where I was getting confused. Maybe it was not. I I just, I remember something about a, a, a cow comet or something. And maybe I'm thinking of a different thing, which would be buck wild, but <laughs> possible, I guess. So, I mean, as far as my memories of the Wild West Cowboys of Moo Mesa goes, uh, based on, oh, totally on the intro. This is one of those shows that I don't think has, like, the origin episode. You're supposed to get it all from the theme song. Uh, is the fact that Moo Mesa, the titular Moo Mesa, is a mesa that they all live upon as wild right. animals. And then right. a magic comet flies over Moo Mesa, sprinkling down the radiation that anthropomorphizes all of magic the creatures. Comet, by the way, that is a hat on a hat. It doesn't, it can be magic or it could be a, it doesn't need to be a magic comet. It's already, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Well, it has the ability to anthropomorphize all of the life forms on the Moo Mesa. So that's how, like, you have the, the Wild West Cowboys, you know, the Dakota Kid, Montana Marshall, and the, De no, it's the Dakota Kid. I don't know that the, the, the Dakota like a bat character on that show. Yeah, there's a bat. Like there's a vulture. The scorpion is bad. Um, Terror bull, uh, which is really just Sherwood Forest sheriff, but like yeah, as a bad guy. looking villainous. That's that's Battletoads though. That's not that is yeah. The, the Dark right? Queen okay, okay, is okay, Battletoads. Okay. Yes, yeah, we okay. were granted gifted so many anthropomorphized animals because of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, specifically in the 90s. And talking about 90s entertainment, that's a big deal. It's one of the things. Here's the thing. Um, we don't need to tell you this, right? But behind the curtain, just, inside... The one was, was end of that era was SWAT Cats. That, just going to put that out there. Anyway, go SWAT, ahead. No, Road, Road Rovers came after SWAT Cats. No, yes, but I didn't like Road Rovers. Oh, okay. So for Seijin, so what Seijin really, was really done with, kept it off for me was how did you not like Road Rovers? That stuff, oh, no. good stuff there. Um, but we'll be talking about '90s entertainment in a bit. Um, but you know, the inside baseball behind the curtain. Welcome to the say report of it all. We're recording this one a little bit early, not as crazy early as we've done other ones, but. This is a Saturday recording um, because things came up in my life and Seijin, as I am amenable to things coming up in his life, was amenable to me and that's great. Find yourself a collaborator who understands that. Life happens. Um, but here's the weird thing, right? So normal episode of the Say Report, I roll out of bed, I get into the, the studio and I'm just like, what am I going to talk about? But today, because like it's a day early, I'm like, man, I should have a list. I should have a list of things I want to make sure I talk about. So I'm coming more prepared than ever <laughs> to yeah, this episode. Well, there's only one thing that I need to talk about, and that is the roller coaster ride of the American hero. That is Joey Chestnut. <laughs> oh my God! We, I want to talk about this. That's fine. Because I have eight other topics, and we will get to them. But let's let's kick off with the Joey Chestnut thing, because honestly, I'm sick of it. I want to throw up. I feel like I've just eaten a hundred Nathan's hot dogs, and the only response is to vomit. I'm pretty sure 68 is his record. Yeah, <laughs> I could eat a hundred. I just I'm I'm barred from competing as well because of my sponsorship agreements. That's a lie. I just need <laughs> to. That's that's for the joke. I don't think well, I could I eat a hundred hot dogs. I just, get a little sick so after many, four. <laughs> so the big so so the big thing right is like 
Netflix is now involved. So this is why I think we finally have to talk about it. Well, yeah, no, that's... <laughs> because, right? <laughs> it's like, because with everything that we do where we talk about how streaming services and what they're trying to do to try and stay at the top because, like, it's this, like, this this crabs in a bucket bullshit that's going on right now. Um, and in the latest move, uh, as I have predicted, live sports was going to be the way that we were going to go. But Netflix went and had to Netflix that theory up a little bit. And <laughs> the live sport that they have decided to next dip their toe into is eating live competitive eating competitions which is like i i honestly can't believe we hadn't done it already um i mean man, they had done the it like the nathan's hot dog contest is televised every fourth of july right but netflix but like having like a streaming service like netflix being like we're just gonna because i mean we picked up on baking shows we right. picked up on like the travel food shows i just can't believe we didn't pick up on the other part of that which is the actual eating of the food show <laughs> <laughs> i think it's because and i don't like i watch a couple of uh youtubers who do food challenges um inherently that's fucking disgusting and that is not like in my opinion on that even the eaters themselves are like, this content that I create, I understand there is inherent disgust factor to what I am doing. Like we, I, we like, live in a post mukbang world. <laughs> I don't know, man. I like, like, like there is a there is a grossness factor to it, but I don't think it reaches a level of disgust like we think it does. But, People but I, literally have made careers out of gaining 200 pounds on youtube yes like yes I, I mean i don't disagree i'm saying by their admission like you might not want to watch is going to get a little is going to get a little disgusting might be a little bit gross like it's when they go to like do a food challenge at a restaurant and there are people like right. who are also eating and they're like just heads up like this might turn your stomach what I'm about to do. So it's, you're not wrong. I, I've never really been disgusted by anything that I've seen in a food challenge. Hell, I've never been disgusted by anything that's happened to me from some of the food challenges that I have competed in. One time. <laughs> One time on a man versus food, he couldn't handle it and, and lost it all afterwards. And and there was something about it that was like a it was like a milk and pie challenge or some nonsense. And like that was the one time where I was like, I don't need to watch the rest of this and change the channel generally when it comes to that sort of stuff first of all generally that stuff is catered in a way that that doesn't happen very often and then when, on top of that when it is it doesn't really tend to bother me too much but like i said like the the first step in that is that usually we don't focus on that aspect of it right but i i, I think it's just so funny that like they are they inherently always have that warning like loaded up for any like spectators who might be there that like this is not going to be fun. This is not going to be like watching me on the internet. There's no oh, yeah. editing. Like, this is live, well, raw it's the wildest. It, yeah, it's the wildest spread in humanity <laughs> as far as, like, who can tolerate wet mouth sounds and who is, like, straight up just going to, like, run screaming, right? Like, so on the one hand, you have that level of people that are watching this shit on YouTube and consuming as much of it in a day as they can. Like, that, that is one side of that. And then the other side of that spectrum is the person that if you sneeze the wrong way, they almost puke. <laughs> like... Those people are weird. I really wish you hadn't brought up that person who couldn't handle the way I sneezed. Cause like <laughs> it was, a, that was a weird day. <laughs> ah, life. It happens all around us, <laughs> but yes, no, but continue. There, yeah. yeah. So now Netflix on labor day is going to have Kobayashi versus Joey chestnut eating so, hot yeah. dogs. Now, so here's I... the deal. For anybody that doesn't know what the hell is even happening, and you could totally be forgiven for that, but in my circles, I can't get the fuck away from this news, <laughs> is that two weeks ago, it was announced that Joey Chestnut was going to be... Joey Chestnut, current world Nathan's uh, eating hot dog champion, blah, blah, blah. He's got a bunch of different things, so he is considered a world eating champion. Yeah. He's got literally dozens of different titles in the world. Um, but um, one of his biggest ones, the biggest one, is the Nathan's Hot Dog Championship. He's been that champion for years. He holds the the, the world record at, like, 67, 68. Uh, this, the guy behind him in second is in down, like, the 40s and 50s, not even fucking close. Like, that's how far ahead this dude is in that in that particular uh, goal and he's been the star for nathan for years like to the point where there was like a food protester that like ran on stage back in like 2016 17 like in that era and he like 
mid eating hot dogs chokes out this protester for disrupting the show and then goes back to win the challenge like this guy has been so pro nathan it is almost like militaristic <laughs> it's fucking wild to go find that video where joey chestnut mid eating contest chokes out a dude and then goes back to eating hot dogs <laughs> He looks like a universal soldier. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know how to say this in in any other way, but the type of dude who could eat sixty eight hot dogs in mm-hmm. the allotted time that Nathan's gives, I don't know enough about this contest. And I will say, I don't know enough about this contest because I am fearful that if I learn too much, I will want to compete. That it, my competitive nature would come out. So this is dangerous territory that we're in. But this, this is, sort of this dude... is, I mean, this is competitive eating on a level though that is sport. Yeah, these are guys exactly, that have definitely. like regiments, like like on the level of Dwayne Johnson in terms of this is what I eat when in order to train my stomach to be able to expand in the like. Yeah, like you would have to get so deep into this if you really wanted to compete that it would change your entire lifestyle. I know, and which I just nuts. I, I know I've done a bunch of challenges without any prep. And I can tell you, I finished them, and then, like, 45 minutes later, I refund, to borrow a fun phrase from Seinfeld. <laughs> um, and, like, and one of my, like, biggest refundings was the time I ate the 10 scoop Sunday at Newport Creamery, the holy cow, and then I threw up as I got home, and my parents thought that that was the first time I got drunk. And they're like, what, what purple liquor were you drinking? And they're like, oh, no, that's black raspberry ice cream. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I'm good. I, I'm not I'm not underage drinking. You don't need to worry about it. This doesn't need to be a very special episode of Devin's life. Uh, and also the two two-foot-long hot dogs challenge, which has mm-hmm. been clear, clearly been in my mind since this was announced on June 11th. Like, I got the hot dogs down fine, but then you had to eat a pound of fries and the first fry passed my lips, and I'm like, well, now I'm done. I cannot do any more. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse I, me. Um, I, have never, <laughs> I have never won a food challenge, just straight up, not even come close. I have attempted a couple that have just been fun ones, like uh, gone places where it's like, hey, for, you know, order this $30 steak, but if you finish it in an hour, it's free type shit. I, I, have, I have done one of those types of things and didn't finish it, so I just paid the money for it, right? Like, you know, that's <laughs> yeah, that's what buy-in. you do. Like, it's like, fine. Um, yeah, like like I have so I have tried it a few times just like with friends and shit and in like cool places, but like I've never even come close to winning one. And like I, I can't even begin to comprehend some of the like like and it's always like this is just it, it it's always the smallest person in the room that pulls it off, isn't oh, yeah. it? Yes. Like there was a there was a Euro place near me when I was living in Bowling Green, Ohio, and it was this phenomenal place and the Euros were like as big as your fucking forearm, right? And like you put that on the plate and they had a challenge that was a, a compounding challenge. So essentially the first time they had offered it was the first person to eat three in an hour, get them free. And then when that got broken, it went up to four. It was at the point that I lived near them, it was up to like a dozen. And the 11 winner was this woman that was could not have been more than 100 pounds wet, but she must have been like a marathon runner or a swimmer or a gymnast or something. Because like she apparently packed away 11 of those fuckers in an hour. <laughs> Jeez. I, I also remember, like, remember Spike's Junkyard Dogs? I think there might be uh-huh. one left. Yes, six... sorry, I just had, like, an orgasmic experience. That was really was something Spike's that Junkyard just happened dogs. to you, Siege. Uh, it was um, when the one opened in Coventry, like, it was right next door to the Blockbuster that I worked at. So I went that first day and tried to eat the six hot dogs, and I got all the hot dogs down, mm. but it was the bread. Was it? Was there stuff on them? Killer. Yeah, they. No, they, I just the got them plain. The whole, like, I got, rooms, I got right? six plain hot dogs because right. I just wanted yeah, you to gotta be do on that it. If you're doing one yeah. of those challenges, fuck yeah, exactly. that, man. If you were, <laughs> and even then, the guys like so I because we talked about you coming in like and you working the 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 blah, blah, the stupid um plaza that we're in. Uh, someone came in this morning right when we opened and ate 12 hot dogs. <laughs> like, and he was just like, I'm a trucker on the way through. I'm going to eat a hot bunch of hot dogs. But he's like, but I'm still going to give you the shot because you were at school. You would have been here when we opened. So I'm going to give you the shot. And I didn't do it. And huge photo of me as like the face of failure. Because basically it was like a cross promotion for the hot dog right. place, the Radio Shack, and the Blockbuster that I worked at in the same nice. plaza. Is like you they they come over and want to see me, like, oh you're the guy who threw up. <laughs> and I'm like, Yep, that was me. I had to hang it up. 
You know what I can do though? While we're done, and then we'll get back to the Joy Chestnut. I'm sorry about it, but like, no, no, know, no, no, no. Um, yeah. I can do burger challenges. I can do burger challenges without even trying. Uh, that time that Will and I wound up stuck in Bowling Green, we stopped at a Bubs in Indiana, and that stands for mm-hmm. Big Ugly Burgers. And mm-hmm. if you eat a one pound burger there, and that's a one pound after cooking burger, they're like real yep. proud of that. You get a photo on the wall. And then increasingly more if you can do more. Like if you can do four of their one pound burgers, they'll make a standee of you and put it in the place. But I ate the one and there was this one guy, Will, Will can definitely back this up, who was losing his mind because I ate the one. And then the waitress is like, I literally see people do this all the time. Like, I'm not excited about this. I'm sorry that I cannot be as excited as you are, sir. But this is my job. Um, (laughs) Denny's Beer Barrel Pub, the one in uh, Pennsylvania that does, like, the huge burgers. I've done their single burger challenge, which is a pound and a half. And that's just, like, I was driving and I'm like, oh, there's that place. Let's stop. And so I, this and is I did also, it. this is one of those sports yeah. just to get back to the food. Sorry, challenge sorry about it. Yeah. it. No, 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 no. Like, like, but this is to you, to everything that you're saying, this is the reason that America, America has the reputation. It does. <laughs> yes. Take, that's... take that for what that means. But like, <laughs> I, you know, it's not that there aren't like fun food challenges all over the world. So like uh, one of my favorite ones in like uh, Southeast Asia is like the stinky sushi stuff that they do mm-hmm. and things like that. Like there are, there are places all over this world where you can find silly things that people have been doing with food and daring each other to do all over. But only in America is it the concept of true excess and everywhere. It's not just like one place, every couple of states. It is every state has one. Every Every franchise. Every franchise has some form of this. Like the, the, the daring you to come eat food thing is like McDonald's was doing that for a while with like their like habanero shit. Or was that Burger King? One of them was like, we made it so fucking spicy. We dare you to take a lick. And it's like, okay. Uh, No, but thank you for offering. But like that, that, that food challenge, that idea of the food like game is just so, such a, also feels like such a fucking stupid American thing. And, uh, and man, is there nobody more emblematic of that than Joe Chester? Joe Chester. I mean, yeah, like, cause every challenge in England seems like it's just a big breakfast. Like mm-hmm. every food challenge in England is like, you got to eat our big breakfast. And those are like, you don't want to live. Looking at those where it's like, yeah, you have to eat a whole loaf of fried bread and a whole loaf of toasted bread. And it's like that kills a person like you just normally, made. Like, yeah, this, like, is, this <laughs> is normally so, sold to the old lady sewing circle when they come for tea in the afternoon. Like, but do you understand you that like yourself like- in America, <laughs> we challenge you to eat like you don't want to live in England? They're just like, kill yourself by trying to eat this. <laughs> Seriously, two full loaves of bread is ridiculous. What, well, what it is in England is that these are old <laughs> forms of the death penalty that they used to use back in medieval times that they've now just, they, they still hold on to because it's a very historic place. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one that I've done, just to talk about burger challenges, and this was one where I, like, specifically told my group, don't let me order the challenge burger. And then we had gotten there for an event, and the event was not going to start for like an additional hour like we were an hour early for the event we just misread it so i'm like fuck it i'm doing the challenge burger and i didn't even i wasn't prepared for it in any way shape or form and i just finished it like i didn't even like it wasn't even an effort on my part and i'm just like that's their challenge and i was on their facebook page for it like it was cool so like mm-hmm. i can do burgers burgers are a thing that my body is prepared for but all the other stuff, like, no, like hot dogs, I, I failed multiple hot dog eating cha- challenges. So, like, just oh, to uh, center I, it, but. I'm also fully aware that we're doing this uh, a week before possibly one of our best and now most ironic episodes is going to come out. So be prepared for that, too. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited but... for that episode. But then, uh, yeah, we, you'll see when it comes. But, yes, so the Joey Chestnut Kobayashi so, oh, so Joey story. Chestnut, yeah. true American hero, Nathan's hot dog, true like true Nathan's hot dog fan, patriot, whatever you want to call him, right? Apparently, has decided that he needs to, to go in a different direction or needs a lot more money. I don't know where this came from, but went with who was it? it which impossible food foods? Was it? Or not I'm organic. looking at it. I, the beautiful thing is about like 
constant communication between CJ and I is that I know that this first happened on 611, so June 11th, mm-hmm. where he sent me this is a god this if this is true it's a goddamn travesty. The exact <laughs> quote from CJ Zerowick about this. An American has been silenced. Beyond I will you, not right? stand for this. And you know, yeah, like it was a Bleachers Report tweet that he sent over to me, and it's because he agreed to represent the vegan brand Impossible Foods over Nathan's. Impossible. It was yeah, impossible. impossible. Yeah. Yeah. So he got a contract to represent Impossible Foods, um, and so at this time, all we know is he gets a contract for Impossible Foods. Nathan's is just like bye to like their fucking money maker, right? And it's just like whoa, that's wild, right? Well, and what's <laughs> more wild what's what's more wild is the fact that MLE Major League Eating is also involved in the reason why he can't do it. Because their whole bylaws talk about sponsorship and conflicts of interest. So but it's we're not talking ju- about a but we're talking about a sport and we're talking about a league that by all accounts from the outside pretty much look like the only reason they exist is joey chestnut imagine if you will that basketball was like as popular by like an eighth right people just weren't into basketball and one day you just hear about michael jordan and you're just like, oh, you know what? Fuck that. I, Let's talk about the WNBA because nobody pays attention to the WNBA. You know, I mean, it's, suddenly, it's currently happening with Caitlin Clark. And I mean, and yeah. now suddenly you hear all this shit about Caitlin Clark, and suddenly you're just like, oh, this Caitlin Clark person, they're the only person in this sport I hear about. So why are they not doing more to make sure this person is being taken care of? And it's just like, if you're in the WNBA or, or, or somebody that has been paying attention, you're just like, because there's other people in this sport, this isn't just about them, which is a totally fair point. But in the world of capitalism and you want that money coming through, you still do what you can to take care of that person, right? So in light of everything that came out, we, a la Joey Chestnut and all this, more and more has come out about how the Major League Eating and Nathan's Hot Dog tried so hard to change the rules to allow Joey Chestnut to keep competing even though he'd be sponsoring imp- by Impossible. And to the point where Nathan's Hot Dog, one of their big like like submissions was, what if we don't mention any brand names the entire time? We just won't mention any. <laughs> they were literally willing to, to take the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Championship with their shit <laughs> everywhere and go, we'll throw it all away as long as you let us still have the event and you're there. <laughs> You know what my favorite part about this is? Is seeing in my mind the event with all of the marketing taken away. And what that means is some poor schmuck that that used to be us had to put a strip of gaff tape over the word Nathan's. (laughs) Over the word Nathan's. Like everywhere that it happens. And that's you know what's it. What's sad is we all know the hot dog, but nobody knows the bun brand. I don't. I don't know what bun brand they go. But with. you fuck hot one, dog maybe? buns. Hot dog right? buns know what they fucking did. The fact that I get ten <laughs> francs and only fucking eight buns. Go fuck yourself, hot dog bun brands. You know what you did. I'm sorry. I'm fucking that anyway, bothers yeah. me more than yeah, anything else some, in this yeah, world. But, but but the amount of like, I mean, that is an insane offer. Right, that is like the amount the amount of uh, stupidity behind that, but anything to try and keep Joey Chestnut in this. All right, all right, all right, all right. We really want Michael Jordan to continue playing in the NBA. We will remove all mention of Nike (laughs) everywhere. (laughs) Yeah, okay. (laughs) Good Good luck luck with that. that. Yeah, right. And and then so like then there's yeah so so this whole thing happens and Joey Chestnut and his team. Refuse and 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 probably at that point because like no we just got a bunch of money from Impossible to say to like we're Impossible and say Impossible as much as we can so like we we can't do that <laughs> like that's an insane offer for everybody involved <laughs> that's the nuclear option that that yeah so that is yeah so so they so they part ways right and 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 it's this huge thing about how they're just they're they're gonna try and do it without him the second place dude is going to step up um not going to get close to that 68 but it's going to be what it is on the other side of this netflix apparently is just like oh we got to get in on this it decides to sign joey chestnut and it is 
it is so clearly this like slapdash isn't the right word because we haven't seen it yet i don't know the quality of it but like the the speed with which they were just like swoop and they were just like oh well, let's get these two greats because kobayashi has been retired for years right yeah. isn't yeah i think it's the fact that like joey chestnut came into it after kobayashi had like retired or yeah, like right. they, they like or right. they only so got now that we're one just gonna time. put these two greats i mean it's yeah. the logan paul versus whoever of this era of the of the food eating competition right like it's it's like, let's get this current like hot shit and put him up against the old shit and let's see who who can do it and like it's rocky it's fucking match, balboa that's what it fucking is it's mason the line dixon versus the italian stallion rocky balboa that movie fucked america I'm so sorry, but was it 2006 that that film came out? Because I'm the pretty second... sure that that movie though was just capturing fights. Like that was not a new concept to boxing or or any type of sport really. Like like <laughs> exhibition matches of rivalries that people of dream rivalries is something that like we build other sports around. <laughs> right. All right. So Rocky Balboa, 2006. I'm proud of that. But it's one of those situations where, like, I do blame Rocky Balboa because it's the big gap, right? Mm. Like, it's the, it's he hasn't boxed for 30 years. And yeah, then yeah. ESPN is like, oh, we put together an exhibition match in the video game. And, you know, Rocky Balboa, fucking video game Rocky Balboa, beat Mason the Lion Dixon. So now people are like, oh, let's see what happens in real life. And it's like stupid it's like when people are like yeah we had the madden version of the super bowl so we have a pretty good idea how the super bowl is gonna go no you fucking don't this is actually one of my least favorite things that sports commentators will do specifically basketball guys man oh Oh. my god the sunday you hear this shit all the time where they will talk about somebody today like lebron james and they'll say yeah lebron's good but there's no way that he could be in his prime jordan and it's like yeah okay but in his prime jordan's not playing anymore we could put him up against Jordan now, but you're right. There's so many factors to that that you're like, that's not fun either. Yeah. So like, what is this? What what is this weird power struggle that we're gonna have to have now? And like, um, it kind of happened with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right? Because like, they straight up when he was about to beat Kareem's record, right? Like like we're doing shots of like Kareem in the audience, like like zoomed in on him watching his legacy get wiped away. <laughs> It's like, why are we doing this to these to these heroes of the past that we have all agreed like we're great in their time? Why do we need to go back and be like, actually, they're not as good as we thought? Or I mean, the game has changed the fucking so fucking much. Like, right, like right, just to yeah. be that person about it, right. undeniable how much the game of basketball has changed. Right. Um, but like, I mean, that's true in boxing too, because yeah. like I was saying, with all this Logan Paul shit and, and Tyson right now, right? right? And there's like all this talk about is Tyson even going to be able to fight? So like his health is in this weird place, and it's like, <laughs> what is this fight going to do for anybody besides make these two idiots a fuck ton of money, right? Like, like I like the there I don't I don't understand, and maybe this comes from the the my my inability to get as deep into sports as some people do, but I don't understand the thrill of watching. Two people who are not in their prime fight because I don't like Paul is just not up to fucking snuff with the fights that we have seen him do. Even I, a casual watcher, know that he is making mistakes and he is not a great boxer. He's a good boxer. There's a reason that he is able to continue in the career past the the one like like, hey, it's just me doing a YouTube thing that he did at this point 10 years ago, I think. Right. But but there's he's never going to be one of those ones that's going to go down in history as like one of the greats that's just not going to happen well i mean that's, that's fine <laughs> but why does he get to have a special with mike tyson <laughs> because somebody is willing to do it but that's the thing like, well, because for, he is willing to put the money behind right it. that's the and who has just put the money behind it KD, knowing yeah, that yeah, the, the investment yeah, and everything exactly. there yeah but it's one of those things is like that's the central thing that's missing about from Rocky Balboa, right? I say that it fucking ruined the world. Well, at least that one was a guy who was at the top. He's the heavyweight champion. And then they're like, yeah, but how could he do against Balboa? Here's a virtual representation of that. Oh, this would be interesting to see. It's not interesting to see fucking someone on an NBA team who is not LeBron James play against Michael Jordan. Right? Like, yes, you still made it to the professional level, but there are people who are known at that professional level. There are names that you recognize. Right. Right? Right. So, like, Logan Paul, sorry, 
to say this about Logan Paul, right? Let's just start a new beef, right? I'm I'm coming for you, Paul. No, I'm I'm really not. Right? I'm I don't just, think I've ever been nice to him on the show. No, before, no, no. We never have, I right? But <laughs> but this is the moment where I'm on my soapbox and I'm fucking saying it. Is the it was fact a lot that better than when you went after John Oliver? Oh uh, well, you know what though? We should have gone after John Oliver. We've passed him. I mean that little bakery with the little cake bears. They got free <laughs> convection of it. Like I was just trying to get his attention. I wanted him to notice this agent. If you're listening, share it with John Oliver and he'll continue to ignore us. But, Even um, though I think Logan he might be Paul, my real father. But going but back... If Logan Paul <laughs> sends us a pallet of Prime, I will just dip my nuts in it and throw it out. Fantastic. So don't, don't do that, no. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I, you couldn't even donate it, right? If we get a pallet of Prime, you bring that to a food shelter, they're like, yeah, we don't no, really want this I would poison. Have biologically <laughs> no. contaminated them. So, no, I would not donate them, Devin. You're right. No, that's that's true. We should fill it with, uh, we should fill a swimming pool with it, and then you should bathe naked in it. Um, I, I, just, I, I hope, you know, like, I hope, but, like, I understand that I went very blue there for a second, but I just wanted to be clear. It's because I fucking hate Logan Paul. But no, anyway, fair. keep going. No, it's fair. <laughs> I, I get it. But, like, he's not, I don't give a fuck about him fighting Mike Tyson. Right? right? Like, I, if it, I, first of all, this would now require me to know who the best person in boxing is right now. And I don't fucking know that. I will just admit that to you. But I would rather see that guy. I would rather see the equivalent of Mason the Line Dixon fight against Mike Tyson. I don't want to see some fucking guy who like, oh, I, 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 I've boxed a little bit, right? That'd be like if I was going to fight Mike Tyson. Who the fuck would give a shit about that? No, no, no. There, is a, there is a very small window of... I have never boxed before, and I'm going to box Mike Tyson that I would watch. The second it's a, I have a casual, like, acquaintance with training for boxing, then I'm done. I'm like, okay, you you can get there, but you got to work for this. But the second you say to me, this person has never stepped in before and now we're gonna watch him fight mike tyson i actually that actually yeah you know there's like... there's something um here's what needs to happen right here's the movie that we need to write patent pending patent pending patent pending released in the 388th episode of the say report so we literally own this idea that has probably been thought of before right it's somebody who's really good at mike tyson's punch out and is gonna be that guy who fights against mike tyson so we're just spoofing Gran Turismo. Basically, I mean, not spoofing Gran Turismo, a hundred percent. We're also I mean, kind of spoofing Rocky Balboa. Spoof. It's we both should, of them. Yeah, it's right, both. Fine, but, There's a little bit well, of Rocky Gran Balboa Turismo, in there. I, g- g- yeah, Gran Turismo already has a little bit of Rocky Balboa in it. But anyway, yeah. but because uh, like every sports movie since has. But um, but yeah, but the, yeah, but but uh, like, I think oh my god, you your finger Turismo. speed is so impressive. And then it's like, oh, you could beat Mike Tyson. And then Mike Tyson, he's like, I want to go up against him in a match. He thinks he can beat me so bad. I don't we, know. Do you think we could just get a Hellboy there to just come back into David Harbour to just do that same role? Yeah, of course. That'd be fantastic. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you could beat him with your controller, right? Have you ever thrown a punch? <laughs> We'll just come pow under the fist him into the movie. He doesn't even have to do any shoots. We, we will get his really, permission because I believe is, in of that. Of course we but, need to but, get his permission. But, but yeah, I would love it. I'd absolutely love set. At, like, I don't know if it's set now or if it's set in 1989 when Mike Tyson's punch out the NES game comes out. But it's somebody like it's summoning salt, right? Summoning salt, I think, just got a crazy fucking record in Mike Tyson's punch out. Um, you can fact check me on that. We'll have the information in the next next episode of the Say Report, uh, episode 370, uh, 390. Sorry, wow, I cannot believe that we are at 390 episodes almost. Um, where, where I'll actually have who is the best at punch out right now, but I think summoning salt just did something. Um, if everything is to be remembered properly from what I've seen on Are the you internet. vamping so I could research for you? No, is no, no, I'm doing? not vamping. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just, I just I understand, I want people to understand that if I said something wrong, don't worry, on my list of eight topics that we have yet to cover any of yet, I have some corrections and apologies. So know that they will come. But we have an episode, a very, very special time capsule episode for next week. So just wait. But yeah, I think it's just, I think it would be very funny if Mike Tyson was like, oh, he can beat me in the game. Can he beat me in real life? Yeah, no, apparently somebody saw inside of Mike Tyson world record since at least July of last year. So, yeah, so but I think yeah, he also we're, just we're like pushed past some other barrier uh, that mm, they thought wild. was going to be done. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, so like that's the whole thing. Is I don't. What are we talking about? Oh, so yeah, so well, Kobayashi and Joe Chestnut deciding that this is this is what they want to buy into right now, right? And and just that I mean, you're about to do a bunch of corrections apparently, but I want to say this is one we fucking called. Just we did call know, this, yeah, hundred percent. We, we 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 could not have guessed it was going to be this weird, but who the who the fuck could have? I mean, my favorite part of this whole thing is when you're like, he's canceled, American has been silenced, and then within like 16 hours, I send you the Netflix things like, oh yeah, silenced, and you with the pithiest response ever, so just like everyone who's been canceled, he's got the book deal, he's got the Netflix deal, and it's like, yeah, no, we nailed this, fuck. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it was. It's amazing. I, yeah. I just, I, I also love that that like with all things with this dude Joey Chestnut. I, as much as I know who he is and have been following him for years, I have never seen this dude interviewed. I have never heard this guy speak a word. So I have no idea what his personality is like. Everything I know about him comes from the fact that I know he eats a lot, very well, and has made this whack fucking decision in the last two weeks so so i don't know if this is clearly like a, a joey chestnut move to like go for the money and fuck nathan's or if this dude is going through like a life crisis because lo and behold after a decade of a and a half of competitive eating he's like maybe i need to back away from the unknown meat packages <laughs> well i mean it's one of those situations right one of the things i'm going to talk about is Shorzy season three. Because that was a fucking lovely surprise yesterday. Um, I was out. Uh, you know, dad is going through some treatment. So I, I went up to Boston with him. And then, like, he got the treatment. And then it's just, like, sitting in the hospital. So I'm flipping through because they got all this crazy. Hospitals are insane right now. Right? And they're like, here, you have free Hulu. And I'm looking through Hulu. And Shorzy season three dropped yesterday. I had no idea that it... I knew it was coming. But I didn't realize that all six episodes were going to be available. And at the end of Shorzy season three, spoilers, he gets offered the chance to be a commentator. And the response is, how much are they going to pay you? Because now I'm going to have to beat them. Because I want you to come back and coach for us. Spoilers for Shorzy season three. Um, and that has to be like, just like, how much is Nathan's paying you? All right, we're going to pay you this much. It has to be about the money. Oh, There's I, nothing I, else the, about the it. The slightest like, motherfuckers in this whole story are fucking Impossible Burger. Uh, impossible in Foods. And paying enough money <laughs> to the man who is the face of American meat excess and saying, now you will work for us. And whatever fucking, they must have some blackmail material on him. Like, like we found you secretly eating hamburgers in this one nope. in this one competition. No, 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 you, did, no, no. you didn't get that record. No. <laughs> All they have is fucking a ton of money because they have the seed money because a lot of people were really interested in it, right? I mean, Impossible Foods, the fact that they were covered in that South Park episode with like, I'm a goo man. And we make the goo into whatever food you want. <laughs> I'm a goo, man. Like, they have the money from people who are investors. And, yeah. like, this is the guy that you want to pay. And they can offer him double, maybe even triple whatever Nathan's. I mean, how much fucking money do you think Nathan's is giving him to be, like, uh, the face of a, Nathan's? He... So he had a $3 million contract, uh, or no, sorry, this is the contract that I think we know he has with Impossible. I'm trying okay. to remember now, fuck. But it was a $3 million contract paid out over four years. So it was like 200 and some odd million dollars a year was what he was going to be getting. And uh, that's fucking wild. Apparently, yeah, no, that's what Beyond is, is has offered him. Okay. So we do know how much they are paying him, and it is this. But Three million over it's, four it's, years? Three, uh, three million over four years. Okay. Moses Malone and Bill Walton, the first players to earn a million dollars in a season, were paid exactly one million dollars for the 1979-1980 season. That's the NBA. So, like, d there's not the money in professional eating that there uh, yeah. is in other professional sports. But now, but now Netflix is involved. Now Netflix exactly. is involved, right. But it's just like, think about that. The the Larry Bird became the first player to earn five million or more with a salary of seven point oh seven million in the ninety one ninety two season. So within ten years, uh, two players went from making a million in a season to a single player making seven million in a season, like that. 
I don't think we're going to see that here, right? So if somebody comes to you, right, and is like, we're going to give you $3 million, and even then, like, I wish it were $4 million so that he could say, I'm going to be making a million dollars a year for the next four years, right? It's, it's already some fucked up, I mean, I could do the math. I have a cal- calculator. But, like, it's math that I have to do, and I don't want to have to fucking do that. I want to be able to know how much Joey Chestnut is making each year very easily with his deal with Impossible Foods. But like, so if it were three million for three years, he's making a million a year. I understand that. And that is, I mean, it's still a straight up, right? 40 minutes into this episode of the Say Report, I can say that if I were given a million dollars tomorrow, this is not a solicitation. It is just a fact. A million dollars tomorrow, I live the rest of my life without a care in the world. I do not need to worry about where I'm going to live or that. Because I'm not one of these people who's given a million dollars and then stops working. I'm also not going to buy a giant glass fucking elephant like Chucky Finster's dad. Right? I'm going to... I was just like, oh, a million dollars. All right, that's a house, right? I can get a house. And even then, like, houses are half a million dollars now, right? Well, and we have it's to talk a about terrible what, market. what a sponsorship. We also have yeah. to talk about, like, what a sponsorship truly is, like, in the grand scheme of things, which I think is what you're getting at. And this yeah. idea that you become, like, this, like, brand ambassador, right? <laughs> like, and so you do kind of have to jump when they tell you to jump, right? You yeah. do have to go yes. where they tell you to go for that whole time. But... You have to also imagine there's a level at which you are doing a lot of things you want to be doing too, right? <laughs> One would fucking hope, man. Like, I don't freaking... Like, and I then don't... after four years, you go into the Impossible Burger. <laughs> you become the guru. Well, and that's like, so the, the idea that also, and you know, like, I don't know how contracts work, so fuck me, maybe this is a pretty normal thing to do it for a weird time of four years, but that seems weird to me, unless you know something is coming right what the fuck do they know is coming in four years that they're just like and then at that time we'll we'll renegotiate it's like okay no i mean like contracts tend to be multi-year and things like that i mean not contracts for us common folk right we're given like six month contracts so that they can terminate us and then hire new people with six months contracts and like maybe there'll be bonuses in that contract but really they're locking you in for work at like well, I mean, to go off of my contract with Carnival Cruise Lines, right? I believe 10 years. I've, I'm outside of any statute of there. Also, I don't think I signed an NDA. I got paid $70 a day for my job at Carnival Cruise Lines. That was a six-month contract, and that $70, that was my daily wage. No matter what, I was getting $70 a day. And that could mean that I worked a 16-hour day, or I could work a four-hour day. Right? So was some, that seven days a week? Or did that's you get seven off? days a week. No day yeah. off. You got time off, not than that. And, you know, sleep is one of them. But sleep isn't always necessarily. Thing. The longest day that I ever worked was an 18-hour day. And so, like, first of all, I did the math, and it was pretty easy math. I feel like an idiot. But I was just so frustrated about, the like, the fact that it's $3 million over four years and, like, what other people make in sports and this type of shit. It just, like... I understand that it's not as physically demanding as other stuff, but then you think about the fact that, like, WNBA players, to bring that up, clear about the same amount as if they were working as administrative assistants in office buildings. And it requires a hell of a lot more physical work from them than the person who pushes paper five days a week, right? Like, that is disgusting, that the WNBA, that's their compensation scheme and yet yeah. in the well, nba we, it's I mean, millions gotta, of yeah, dollars the thing is is that the, the one of the big things in sports is that it's entertainment district man right. that's yeah. also tied to how many butts can you put yeah, in seats exactly. i don't love that math yeah. but like yeah. that is that is also part of it that that office workers don't necessarily have to worry about that side of things right exactly it's not about well, i mean sometimes sales and quotas and stuff like that but you're right uh so first of all joey chestnut is making seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year for the next four years on that contract there it is 750 yeah, not 750. yeah 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 so that's that's it so that's what that is but then also let's look at so six months let's go off of the 28 days in a month times 70 168 i made eleven thousand dollars let's round it up to twelve thousand because you know 28 days is not you like accurate 100 percent. i made twelve thousand dollars for my carnival contract 
And like that's that's not great, right? That's like a common contract, and it was only six months, and they did not have any like reason to offer me another contract, right? And I mean they did, and I turned it down, but that's because like I did the math, <laughs> and like yeah. So if I work two contracts with six weeks off in between them, I'm clearing twenty four thousand. I cannot live on that. Right. right, like the beautiful thing is that live on the boat for the rest you know, of your life. Well, I mean, you live on the boat, and that covers your food and your board for those two six month periods. But then you have to have a place to go for the six weeks that you're mm-hmm. not on a ship. Right, and like, and then, and that was like the real thing is that like, wow, so you're living a half life on the boat because you're stuck in the fucking middle of the ocean, and you're living a half life when you're home because like you. Like, you're not going to want to own property, right? right like, unless you're right. renting it out. Like, <laughs> what? Get one of those rooms like George Clooney and up in the air. Like, just <laughs> walk into just an empty apartment for, for nights at a time. And you're yeah. just like, this is, this makes me feel nothing. Thank you. <sighs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, I mean, the, the whole contract of it, like, yeah, multi year contract. So he's making 750K a, uh, a year for the next four years. That's not bad. Um, but also, they lock him down with a four-year contract because Nathan's can't come along and be like, we're willing to give you $5 million for the next four years. But he's already signed that contract. And if you were to dissolve the contract, he'd have to pay penalties to them. Somebody, I was going to say, somebody would have to come along and do what's called a buyout, from yeah. what I understand. And, yeah. like, you know who might not be able to do that? Nathan's. You know who might be able to do that? Netflix. <laughs> right. But I don't think Netflix, I think Netflix is just oh, saying. Oh, I don't know, man. If they can keep this controversy going long enough and let this literally cook long enough, right? Like, and then, and then, and then suddenly be like, he's coming back to hot dogs two years earlier than you thought. Well, I mean, that's the other thing, right? So if the Kobayashi, Joey Chestnut thing, are they going to be eating impossible hot dogs? And let's be I, honest. I, I, he, he, as far as I can understand, it will be. Well, yeah. I think that's part of the deal. I don't know if it's going to be an across the board thing, but I know that he's going to be. Well, it's him versus Kobayashi. So one would imagine that huh? I, since it's him versus Kobayashi, right, it's just the two of them, right? As far as I know, we're just going to watch two competitive eaters eat on Labor Day. Live yeah, I don't on know Netflix. if there's like an opening actor. Yeah, like, like that. yeah like, so. <laughs> who knows, right? Maybe the poutine eating contest. That one is scary. I don't know if you've ever seen the Canadian poutine eating contest videos from that. Mm-hmm. That like, oh my god, they just put their hands into the hot poutine and shove it in their mouths. And then for for our opening number, here's Rod White, who's just gonna eat a pie. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna eat a tater salad pie. <laughs> Because they call me Tighter Salad. Oh, Jiminy Christ. Uh, but yeah, so th- this. I, how many. So if you could eat 68 hot dogs, right? If I. if I Okay, if I could eat 68 <laughs> hot dogs, and do I still get to spend the next three days on the toilet afterwards? Or is this just like they magically, like J.K. Rowling, disappear from a bowel? <laughs> they don't magically disappear. They shit themselves and then they make the shit disappear. It has to come out of them before they can use the magic on it. She was very clear about that. Ugh, I hate you, J.K. Rowling. I just don't want you to fucking fuck you. I hate that you've come up on the last two fucking episodes. This is the episode where the enemies, the enemies come out. The enemies list. Whoever's out there listening, I hope you're making a list of our enemies. Because the Say Report video game is coming, and we need enemies. We need boss Holy ideas. Shit. Oh my god, if we could Turtles in Time style fight a J- Jake Paul, Logan Paul well, like team up, that would be a phenomenal... I think it would be really good if we wound up like... Um, Streets of Rage, where you go down from the baseball and you land in a fighting arena, and the fighting arena is Mike Tyson and Logan Paul, and then we have to fight them. Mike Tyson <laughs> like we interrupt in the a, fight. <laughs> Mike Tyson comes in with a giant suit jacket on that has tails going about ten ten yards back, and sitting at the very end of it is Logan Paul being dragged in. Yeah. And then we have to fight them. Streets of Rage. Oh man, a beat em up. The Say Report beat em up is the game I'm that sorry, we should Sorry, would it make. not be a beat em up? It would I have feel to like be, it would a be a beat em up. up with trivia elements, whatever the fuck that <laughs> I means. I don't know how the fuck you do that, but well, I guess no. Like it's like trivia stuff. It's multiple choice, 
and we, you have to punch the right answer. If you punch the wrong answer, then but, like. But a la, but a la, you don't know Jack style. Yeah. There's at least one good wrong answer throughout all of it because if you pick that, that's the super answer. <laughs> I mean now I mean now we're just pitching ideas and there we have other things that I would like to talk about this week. I've got to talk about Joey Chestnut. That man <laughs> I hope that man is getting his duggets and I hope that we don't find out he's a terrible person because otherwise Netflix is gonna be just like sitting in No, the again. last thing that I have to ask uh, about that anyway. is you're the type of person who can eat sixty eight regular Nathan's hot dogs, right? Like you you're that guy. How right, many yes. impossible hot dogs do you think that conversion is? Oh, it's the rate there. I, like I have to I imagine you, that. Like, I gotta feel like it's more. I gotta feel like I, it's more. I feel like you could eat more, right? Like they're not as greasy. They're not as fatty. They're not as thick, right? Like it's just goo formulated into a, a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I don't know. You just gotta and just spit and on that thing and things, swallow it. Nice. Yeah, one <laughs> of the things that these kinds of places try and do, like uh, like Impossible Morning Star, like any of these places that do these like veggie-based meats, is they always try and get close to the texture of the meat they're creating. And it never works, and I think it's a terrible idea. I think it's better if you just go the whole other way and you're just like, this isn't meat, eat this This is instead. a unique like, okay, food, cool. like bean burgers. Um, I will say that black right, bean right. burger patties, I, I don't hate them because right, I know exactly. what it is. And right. it is it is unique from or, or a beef pan. In the meat world, or even in the meat world, when turkey tries to hide itself as any other meat, and it's just like, just be turkey, man, because turkey's a good meat. Turkey's um, a solid but, uh, meat. But, Remember yeah. the chicken patties? Not they weren't chicken patties. The chicken burger at Burger King, where it was mm-hmm. like it's ground chicken. It's like this is fucking gross. Just do a chicken sandwich, Burger King. <laughs> why? Why did you try to make this look like a burger? Also, half the world was like, we already have chicken burgers. What are you doing? Yeah, right? Like, it was so weird. Uh, yeah. You have the but, original um, chicken sandwich, Burger King. What is wrong with you? I think I could eat more Impossible. I think, I think, just to, like, I, I, think I could eat more. I think I could, too. So then imagine being him. Like, now his legacy gets to grow. And there's not going to be, like, that. well, actually, he only ate, he ate a thousand Impossible hot dogs. But the conversion rate means that he would have only been able to finish 70 regular hot oh, dogs. We're going to talk about it. There's going to be choleric intake conversions yeah. all, uh, up the wazoo. We're going to talk about that. Don't worry. Because we are health crazed. On top of the fact that we are food crazed, we are also health crazed. We are the most, like, back and forth nation in when it comes to that shit. Yeah. I, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. We'll, 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 uh, we'll report back if anything else yeah. comes up. But at I, this point, I'm just in awe of what's happening. I'm very excited to do that. But we have to. Uh, we introduced a new thing in the Say Report Discord today. Uh, if you, so if you want to join, uh, go to any of us. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on X, formerly Twitter. We're on all of the sites. And, and if you go to any of our bios, there is a link to join our Discord. Because I have created a channel, Siege, and if you want to join me in the Discord right now, called Supplemental Materials. And mm. this is inspired <clears throat> by our quiz master general, William. Unavailable. To, to be here for this episode. But, Seijin, if you click in the 388, the spoiler, I have mm-hmm. a question for you about this can of Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, not a sponsor, <laughs> that Will sent to me know. Friday morning. I don't know where it's going, but go. Go ahead. Seijin, is this Red Hulk or regular Hulk? <laughs> it's regular Hulk. I and think you know it's why? Red Hulk. Because, because nobody at Coca-Cola did the math to figure out whether or not they should do this. <laughs> So the reason why I ask is because, and I don't have this one to show, there is also a Falcon in this whole lineup. So I mm-hmm. wondered if it might be a Captain America Brave New World McDonald's toy situation yeah, with the been, Coca-Cola also, Zero Sugar. But there's also a Black Widow. There's also... And the uh, Black Widow, to quote Dale, because I apologize, CJ, you're not the first person I've had this conversation with. She's like, obviously, comic book Black Widow used there. But the Falcon that they use is clearly MCU Falcon as Wait, Captain is that America. True? Is it, is it yeah. obviously comic? Oh, book? dude! Not only that, there's a Red Panther that is Shuri as the Black Panther. That is so the MCU look of that character. Well, great. That... I thought they were all MCU. So, so the so the so the Black Widow one is is the, the Black only so Widow far one. Not to quote Dale, I haven't seen the Black Widow one. I guess I have the internet here, right? That's how we do it. Um, Black Widow Coke can. I just thought they were all the MCU ones, and and yeah, they, I have seen the the Falcon one. Um, I've seen a 
Daredevil one, I think. Yeah, there's a Daredevil like, one. Like that's what weird. That's what weirded me out was seeing one of like one that wasn't a movie character. I was like, oh shit. But he is a movie character. But I get where you're coming from. Electra. Oh, that Electra is clearly not. It's not MCU. Jennifer. Yeah, that oh, is. There's an Electra. That maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Is there's an Electra one, right? And I was like, well, that's wild because. There's not an MCU counter for them to use like a an image of. Yeah. Uh, dropping this photo from Google into our supplemental material. Th- yeah, that's not that is clearly um, comic book Black Widow and Loki. Well, and then a, so, a wild. Yeah, I was going to say a wild animated take on on Loki, the television show Loki. Yeah. Like it's I, there's no thing there, but I saw that, and my first thought was, okay, so that's a Red Hulk Coke can. Like that was my thought process because he doesn't look like Bruce does in the MCU, and his face is more like defined, which is always something I kind of liked about the Red Hulk. Um, spoilers for who the Red Hulk is, but when like it started to look like General Thunderbolt Ross after they revealed that it was the identity, so he had his freaking mustache and his Mm -hmm. aviator shades. I thought that was stupid. The best part about the Red Hulk was the mystery of who the fuck is the Red Hulk and the way that they made him look hyper-generic, which seems to be reflected in this Coca-Cola Hulk on the cam. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Will gave the best answer. It's the unfortunate truth of it. I have to admit it. He said, that's Zero Sugar Hulk. And I like that. I, I like Zero Sugar Hulk as a character. I want to. I want to read more about Zero Sugar Hulk. Um, I like that if he has sugar, that's what makes him revert back into his human form. I, I like this because he's definitely an influencer, right? Like yeah. he's got he's got a TikTok. He's Hell Zero yeah, Sugar no. Hulk. Oh, he's me still, Zero you know, Sugar he, Hulk. No, smash. he's still super. He's still he's still involved in the suit bullshit. But like, oh, he's one doing of his both. side gigs. Yeah, he's like he's the boys. Doing. I mean, I don't know the boys, but I imagine the boys are like marketed to shit. I feel like that's what that's about. Um, and I'd want to like reference the Box City Wallops, but if there's anybody out there who knows the Box City Wallops, you're talking about the Garth Ennis slash Amazon the boys. I, that I have not ever watched. I, I don't. But, but 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 that's what you were referencing. Yes. I will save us both and say what you mean is the seven from within the boys. Okay, thank you. I don't. <laughs> because specifically, the boys within the boys would not be the ones that were getting marketed. <laughs> Devin Decker doesn't know the boys. I understand, which is why I was stepping in to make sure we didn't get the emails. That's all. <laughs> I appreciate that. Speaking of getting the emails. <laughs> um, so last week, uh, the DLC for Elden Ring came out this past Thursday. Uh, if you were on Steam, you got it seven full hours earlier than console players. Which, like, I'm fucking tired of the video game industry. I'm just going to say that. Uh, But we touched on it briefly last episode um, regarding how you access the DLC. And that was you had to beat Radon and Moog. And it was brought to my attention by some listeners. Thank you, listeners. That the Moog I talked about and defeated is not the Moog you need to defeat to unlock the DLC. There so are two, two Moogs. Moogs. There is Moog the Omen, which is the one I beat, and then Moog the Blood, uh, Moog Elden Ring, Moog Lord of Blood, and Moog the Omen. Mm-hmm. So those are the two Again, things. So I was I've just going simply off of screenshots, and you were just kind of going off of my bad description of those screenshots, so I'm not too surprised we got that wrong. <laughs> well, but also, here's what I'm going to talk about. This game is like this large, sprawling world. Why the fuck are there two characters named the same thing? What? There's some stupid lore reason. I mean, he's a variant. It's a variant of it, but it's just one of those situations where, like, I mean, that's what I'm seeing right now. Yeah, but we just got we just got done with a conversation about Red Hulk versus Green Hulk. I don't think we can have this. (laughs) And we didn't even talk about uh, Awesome Hulk, Gray Hulk, (laughs) Amadeus Cho, Gray Hulk. Uh, I like Blue Hulk, but I don't think he's an official Hulk. God, the freaking Hulk. They've ruined the Hulk. I love the Hulk. I've always loved the Hulk. But yeah, the Hulk. Hulk is also not friendly for pride. I'm going to bring this up while we're talking about the Hulk. The fact that they had to change his name into David Bruce Banner for the Incredible Hulk TV show because, quote, 
from a TV executive, the name Bruce is too gay. Like, it's a shame. It's a shame that the Hulk has never been as respected as the Hulk should be. <laughs> just just going to bring it up. Uh, yeah, so that so I, I do want to say I have not beaten the Moog that you need to unlock the DLC. I probably won't because I've been watching some people stream the DLC and all I am reminded of, as much as there's like this one pull in my head, that like, man, we should go back and play Elden Ring, right, Devin? The other side of my brain is like, yeah, but look how fucking terrible this game is. Look how much empty space this game is. All of your complaints are still valid, even in this smaller package that is the DLC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, everybody who's enjoying it, I'm happy that you're enjoying it. But yeah, but I did need to address the fact that uh, my two Moogs, I spoke of the wrong Moog. All right. Um, uh, any other uh, uh, so to with it? Uh, well, I guess just addressing the fact that the Celtics did win in Game 5, but currently oh, no. the Stanley Cup is going to Game 7 on Monday. Um, okay. So while the Celtics totally support my theory that like we want to win at home, that does not seem to be the fucking fact uh, with the Stanley Cup Finals. It feels like the Florida Panthers, since Game 3, have just not showed up to play. Um, and I had hoped that we could address the victor of the Stanley Cup final, uh, but that's not going to be happening until Monday now at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So, I mean, maybe we mention it in our very special episode on Spider-Man 2 that's releasing this coming Thursday. Um, or maybe you have to wait until after our, we're still teasing it and keeping it a secret, time capsule So We'll tell you what the topic is <laughs> before the end of it, but uh yeah, I was surprised. I've enjoyed the games. They've been pretty good games of hockey. But I was convinced after the Celtics in Game 5 dominated. I think dominated is the proper terminology for it. Right, yeah. Like, yeah, um, yeah. that that's what was going to happen in the Stanley Cup Game 5. And that's not what happened. So, just admitting that. Uh, staying in the rope well, nope, before jumping over to music real quick. Wait, um, wait, wait. Uh, before we leave the Celtics, oh, I do yes. want to give a quick shout out for anybody that has not been paying attention to that. Um, now that they've won, it's an even better time to go back. But the marketing team that has been working on the for the Celtics for the last couple of months has been on fucking point. Have you seen some of these like these TikToks or these YouTube shorts that have been going around no, of them? I will just like, admit that straight they've up. They've been they've been cutting together like the the buckets and like just the, it's just because some of these games have just been stream of bucket after bucket like like it's i'm trying to remember which game it was but one of the games in the last series somebody was talking about how they turned around and they went from being like 10 points ahead to being 30 points ahead and somebody like on the marketing team like just strung together all of the basket shots in a row so that it looked like it was just a continuous fucking looney tunes-esque like like fucking uh manufacturing just just basketball scores like it was nuts it was so good um so just if you're if you're in the mood for a good fucking laugh and you're into sports like go go check out some of the stuff that's been coming out from the uh from the celtics marketing team for the last few months because it's been fucking hilarious to watch them just be like dominating (laughs) meanwhile i'm sitting here trying to convince nbc to uncancel extended family because i believe that show is the direct reason why the celtics won this year with donald Faison playing the owner of the boston celtics i we can't do anything differently if we want to win again next season (laughs) remember extended family I did a pretty crazy deep dive in an earlier episode this year. Um, and it's still on Peacock. So if you happen to have Peacock for some reason, watch Extended Family. It's canceled. But Mike O'Malley. <clears throat> uh, I really want to spin off. Of the, no, I want to make sure I, I address this bit. And then we will go into the... Oh, I got two other crazy topics that I want to talk about. You're going to end up doing a Door of Wonder choice season oh, oh right. door of wonder but i do want to say i was reminded as i was in a conversation about who the first pop punk artist was um and the argument presented was billy idol and honestly i never really thought of it but that that's a really good argument 
That's a good answer. That's yeah. a really yeah. good answer. But then someone said uh, the Offspring, and the response was, "Well, no, Green Day was the head of the Offspring." This is your reminder that the Offspring have been a band for the past forty years. They are celebrating yeah. their fortieth anniversary. They were formed in nineteen eighty four, just like the Ninja Turtles, um, and Green Day was not formed until nineteen eighty seven. And yeah. the Offspring's album hit just before Dookie. So it is one of those weird situations, but I was like, no, no, The Offspring was definitely before Green Day, and I looked it up, and I actually have the proof to back it up. Um, and it was just reminded of that discussion in high school where the English teacher was like, did you know The Offspring has been a band for 20 years? And I'm I also like, don't think yeah. that The Offspring is true, pure pop I don't, punk. I, I don't think so either. Toe. I think they dip their toe into pop punk for from time to time, but they're much more experimental punk in, in that regard. Well, I think that um, they popularized whereas, like, punk Day again, and that's the dis- that? definitive. Their album that came out in, like, 94, like, come out and play and all of that, really mm-hmm. shined a, a spotlight on punk as a genre, and it was responsible for popularizing punk, but I do not believe that that makes them pop punk. There's no, a no. distinction between those two things. I wouldn't yeah, put them into the argument of like a good pop punk band, but when someone's response to that is when the Green Day was before the Offspring, like, no, 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 I'm sorry, actually. And I mean, I hate to be that guy, but you know, we're talking about music, and that's how every music conversation seems to go. And, and I mean, three me. years yeah. difference in music is the fucking it's world. Huge. That, that yeah. is, I was influenced by this band amount of time. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a, just that was the thing that I wanted to touch on briefly. That's the first thing I had on my list, and I wrote that on Tuesday when I was having this conversation. All right, CJ, now you get to have a door of wonder choice. Do we talk about the two video game topics that I have on my list, or do we talk about the movie topic that I have on my list? Let's do some video game stuff, because I've been doing some video game stuff that I want to talk about, so we can right. loop it all together. So I, <clears throat> I'd like to give five good minutes to The Legend of Link echoes of wisdom i'm not calling it anything else (laughs) the fact that i'm playing a zelda means that it is a legend of link game come (laughs) fight me cute um that's not how the titling works but that's not i mean that's not no no, because franchises right we need that name brand recognition (laughs) from the legend of zelda um but but also uh, it's within the world of the legend of zelda it's not really like there's <laughs> so the legend of link echoes of wisdom no um there's plenty of other franchises that have done games that have featured new characters that still you anyway keep going but the bit <laughs> is that everybody's like oh that i'm zelda and it's like you're actually you're it's link. a cute joke so it's, 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 that's all it is all right now but i'm gonna be doing it so if you know me I'm going to be referring to this particular game as the Legend of Link in perpetuity. Just like I call it Fant Four Stick because I, I committed to the bit. Um, just like it's Tack Three and <laughs> Taken or, Three. Uh, what's the what's, what's the no day but tomorrow or Emily Blunt Tom Cruise one there? Um, tomorrow never <laughs> dies. Whatever. Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow, but the, the I am not calling title. it Live Die Repeat. I'm sorry. Right, right. <laughs> you should have called it that from the beginning if you want Devin Decker to refer to it as that now. <sighs> also, I'm only going to call it Hercules. I'm not going to call it Hercules the Thracian Wars. What the fuck is that as a title? Who the fuck are the Thracians? <laughs> but Legend of the Link, Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, it was pretty heavily believed that we'd be getting a new 2D Zelda Um this year as the big like console seller for the end of the year and was it 2d that you had heard or classic because those are two different things i I, I had heard we'd be getting a new classic zelda so not this open world breath of the wild style but more like something like a link to the past to ocarina of time somewhere in that vein of smaller contained world with this with this idea of a more direct path so I heard classic thrown around a lot, but not necessarily 2D. 2D is the word that I was hearing thrown around. Yeah, Something I, like I had not been expecting 2D. Using so, Link's yeah. Awakening stuff, because it already exists for them to build a game. Well, so then that's not 2D, though, right? But, but it is technically 2D. Just because it's like a 2.5D sort of thing, like... You're not ex- you're not existing in a. Th- I don't know. It's weird. Okay. Like, See, because it's top said 2D down to Zelda. Me, I think of like pixel graphic. Like that's that's where I'm coming from. Okay, yeah. Is that I? If you say 2D to me, I think of a very old specific style that was not Link's Link's Awakening remake. 
Right. And I guess that's an interesting de- de- definition because classic, but then I would think of like Orc Arena of Time, you exist in a 3D plane. Like you can mm-hmm. go everywhere, up, down, anything. Link's Awakening is very much just like a top down game, but the sprites themselves like look like they exist in three dimensions. I, I don't, I don't I mean, know. Like you the, can also move up and down, left and right, and in, in, in diagonal. You can't you move can't up and down. Full, you can't. I mean, I mean, on, along a Z axis, you're only a moving along the X and Y axes. You do also move along the Z axis because you climb mountains and stuff. There is height in that game. There is definitive height, height in that game, <laughs> but not the way that Link moves in like Orcarina of Time or Wind Waker. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like yeah, it's yeah. it's different. That's what makes it two point five versus yeah, two. That's yeah. that's the argument that we're talking yes. about right now. Yes. Um. So that was what was heavily rumored. Um. I did not want it to be the Oracle's games remade in the Link's Awakening style, as much as I think that would be great. I I don't I don't know. Like there's they, I those. I don't fuck those games. Those games are stu. If they fix the fucking dancing mini game, then we're fine. <laughs> well, again, because they come from an era where like mini games were fucking king. Oh, Thanks, I don't Final Fantasy VII. Being in it. It just needs to fucking work, and it doesn't work in the current state that it's in. I don't mind a mini game being in a game, games. but like, <laughs> there's so many in that fucking game. And you do them over and over. You have to yeah. do them multiple times. <laughs> yes. It's just like, okay, we get it. Mini games are big right now, but like, can we do yeah. more than just the mini games? So um, neither of us wanted the Oracle no, games. No, I just wanted the Oracle games. Uh, first of all, I'm, a, I'm fine playing a Zelda. I've beaten the Wand of Gamelon, right? And that game is terrible. According to people, I, I had a pretty good time with it. I don't mind playing a Zelda. Where I have an issue with Echoes of Wisdom is that in the brief, brief amount of the game that we have seen, it does not look like she has a way to attack directly. And that That's is bothering assumption. me a little bit. That's a really weird assumption. I had not made that assumption okay but it's, it's a like, video game in a, in the zelda universe i'm pretty sure at some point we'll be able to attack things i hope she gets a sword but everything they show is her summoning a rock and then throwing the rock summoning a table throwing the table summoning other enemies like a pokemon trainer though less like a pokemon trainer more like a summoner um to fight for her there's nothing in the in the material that we see that indicates that she's going to get a sword of her own to attack so you want a sword specifically? I mean, she not just that she can't attack, but you want you want a sword specifically? Uh, no, like if the if they showed her using the rod as like a physical weapon, that would be. It doesn't look like she has a physical weapon. It looks like she's specifically magic, and that is the only thing that really bothers me about what we've seen about the game so far. Also, I'm this person who like, well, Link already exists, and we show him fighting in this in this trailer. I would be fine if after I beat the game as Zelda, I could play through it as Link. I want to be able to do that too. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I just, I want to be Link. Or I want to, like, do the normal Legend of Zelda. Normal is a weird thing. But, like, it's, type it's, of gameplay. It also just sounds so boring to me. Just go play Link to the Past then. If, if, if that's the, if well, that's what I do, see, Jin. different than Link to the Past, then just go play Link to the Past. <laughs> and I yeah, will. but that's what and I'm I saying, because you have the game you want. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, that's a, it's a, I don't know, it's just like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not not going to play Legend of Link because of that fact. It's just... Clearly, there seems to be some sort of pick your item thing because there is the D-pad and right on the D-pad is the tri-rod of wisdom. I, I think it's just the tri-rod, though. Um, so I imagine that other things are going to go to the up, right, and down. And maybe one of those will be a physical weapon. But, like, I am not the person who is excited to see Zelda, like, using beds to build bridges. <laughs> That doesn't get me excited about a new Legend of Zelda game. Playing a Zelda weird got me excited. Fucking shit in Zelda games in the past. Link does some goofy ass stuff to get around. Minish Cap and stuff like that. The ways in which like you need to move like furniture around so that when you're tiny you can then climb it to get through houses and shit like that. I don't. I like like you using using weird objects in the world in order to to make a bridge seems pretty on point to me, but. I don't know. I was excited about playing as Zelda, but then I was disappointed by the fact that it's like, summon the echoes of items that you found in the world. And I'm like, ah, no. No, new mechanics. Wah, boo. 
I wouldn't interesting things added to the formula. No, I want the same thing. No, I want the same thing there. again. I mean, I mean, like, <laughs> there's they, everything that they have added to to Zelda in the last like ten years seems to not quite be hitting with with, with what you want. And that's so true. I'm, that's I'm actually... waiting to find out what you do. I guess. <laughs> I really liked Link Between Worlds. That one was really good. But Which again, was just like linked to the past you... with one extra mechanic that you could get flat. <laughs> yeah. No, I also liked. Um, I feel like it's the direct path to something like Link to the Past Randomizer, because of the fact that like you could tackle it in any order based on the items that you bought from Ravio's shop. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was one of the things that like, oh, if we could do this with the items in Link to the Past, then, like, I think that that helped the evolution of that game. But you're also not wrong. Now that I'm thinking about it, that game is ten years old. <laughs> So, yeah, I really haven't liked anything in the last 10 years, and that's something. Oh, Devin, what is wrong with you? Why are you so broken? I just, I I am super excited because, like, I mean, this is the same. I feel about this the way that I felt about the announcement of Cadence of Hyrule is that, like, this is, this is going to be one of those ones that I is going to be divisive it's going to be one of those ones that not everybody's in the in the, in the community is going to play but i'm going to play the hell out of it and uh, or at least i'm going to give it a shot i mean obviously if it's bad i'm not going to continue to play it but like i am definitely excited to try it because the ways in which cadence of hyrule played with what i expected from zelda games and and like really turned that some of that stuff on its head or the ways in which in breath of the wild and and uh and tears of the kingdom the ways in which those took these concepts of what i love about zelda but then did something else with them like like i'm excited for that kind of game will i play like you know will i be just as excited if they ever turn around and say hey we're just making a link to the past again or, or like we're gonna turn the oracle games into something or we're gonna do a game that's just like those of course i will be excited about that too but like the existence of this game doesn't disappoint me or lessen my excitement for something else that's uh I, if you set yourself up that way, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be happy. <laughs> that's true. And never... that's the central philosophy of this show, right? It's tempering expectations, not bringing expectations with you, trying to go into every experience new. So you bring up a good point. But I have to say, this first week that I've been sitting with The Legend of Link, Echoes of Wisdom, it is just, I wish there was just one moment where I saw Zelda attack something directly. And that I would, we would never be having this conversation. We would be talking about I'm super fucking excited to play a Zelda in a game. It it's it's, it's going to be like a 60 hour game, and we've seen two minutes of footage from it so far. So I I don't I, I don't really feel I'd like guess I can 40 make a, hour an game. Of that I would game. I don't think I'd go 60. I'd go 40. Um, just because I will of the probably end up spending 60 hours. In. I've already yeah. spent 30 hours in Mar in Super in Paper Mario, and I've only gotten four stars. Uh, I will say about that that. After the fourth star, stars are not given out as frequently. So that is partially you, partially how that game is built. Because I feel like you get the first three stars super fast, and then I was doing about a star. I was doing about a star every ten hours, and yeah. like that—that's where I'm where I'm at currently. That's it's fair. taking me about ten hours for each star. I guess I think that because we lost all of our foot, our um, progress. Uh, after the first three stars and then getting those three stars back was very quick to get well, to the fourth to star. <laughs> but then again, yeah, like we didn't know what to do, right? So that's probably that probably affected it. Uh, just thinking about it. Okay. But I do want to talk about this game that I played this week that was fucking awesome, but has some problems in it. Uh, and that is Pampas and Selene Maze of Demons. Great. The Maze of Demons. Season, if this game ever comes to Nintendo Switch, which it is rumored to be coming to Nintendo Switch, they don't have a release date yet, I want to play through it with you. That is how good Pampas and Selene, The Maze of Demons is, that I want to play through it with you in co-op. And okay. one of the reasons why this game is such a good co-op experience is that this is the first co-op experience that I can think of um, where the two characters are not tied to each other. And that made so much difference in exploring this game. Dale what do you and I, mean by not tied to each other? <clears throat> talk, talk about that a little bit. So, Dale, well, I was about to. Uh, Dale and I played through the game. Uh, what we did is I have a lovely little GMK tech box, like a NUC computer, 
And the beautiful thing about this is that it has two HDMI outputs. So one goes into my monitor, one goes into Dale's monitor, and she can sit on her side of the table or at her desk. I can sit at mine. But then we play local co-op, and what comes up on the screen is essentially split screen, where you have one full game screen on the left, one full game screen on the right. And, you know, the player one is the left screen, player two is the right screen. And the beautiful thing about it is, so from the first room, you can go up, down, left, or right. I could go left, Dale could go right, and we could explore not like tied to each other in any way, shape or form. We could yeah. do whatever we wanted. I mean, it's like Borderlands lets you do that stuff, like thinking that way. But like, it was one of these like. But Stardew I, is Stardew is very much encouraged to be played that way, so that one cool. of you could be like farming while the other one goes to the mines type stuff. That's like, wonderful. Like, like that, like this is the first game where we've had that thing because like one of the big reasons I love playing co-op games with Dale, right? But a lot of the time, the issue is that like one of us wants to go faster than the other. Or one of us wants to explore. So, like, it becomes this weird sort of... Like, it, it becomes a point of contention between the two of us. I'll just admit that, right? Yeah. Like, why are you going so fast? Or, like, butter the butter the butter. Right. Yeah. So the, the opposite of this is um, uh, I've been playing a bunch of that Disney game, um, Illusion, Illusion Island. Illusion Island, and, yeah. uh, and it's a blast to be played for a player, but you do need to stick together. It's one of those ones where if you move, if one, if like player one moves too far ahead, it will drag other players to them and stuff like that, which can be a boon depending on, you know, if the other people playing with you are, are having trouble with a, a section or are just, you know, goofing off or grabbing a soda, you can just drag them along with you. But on the other hand, if you're both trying to do two separate goals, it can be a real pain in the ass because you think your goal is the more important one of the other one and <laughs> you don't necessarily agree on which one should get done first <laughs> yeah so the beautiful thing about this game is that pampas and Celine completely unique characters this is a sequel to nightmare 2 uh maze of gallius which is apparently considered one of the greatest games ever released on the mxx msx computer system uh never played it before was interested in this game because it was a co-op metroidvania that's what sold me on it so i'm like i'm picking it up i don't even care like i like the art of it i like the fact that it's a co-op metroidvania that's very interesting to me right um the big issue with pampas and Celine, i'm just gonna rip this band-aid off right now it is not balanced for co-op at all this game is a homebrew game that was originally made for the MSX and put on MSX cartridges so that you could plug it into your MSX system and play the game. But the central conceit is that it was single player and you had to switch between Pampas, who is a knight, so he has a sword, he has a shield, he can block. Eventually he gains the abilities like double the jump or you can play as Pampas, who is his sister. She's a sorceress. Delayed. Delayed. What? Celine. What did I say? I say Pampas again? Pampas. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes. You can play as Celine, his younger sister. Uh, she uses, like, lightning from a wand that is, like, semi-seeking of enemies. So, like, you mm -hmm. can attack. Like, if it's a bat, it'll it'll arc upwards to attack the closest bat. She also uses fire um, so she can, like, break ice and things like that, where Pampas has a bow and arrow. And her, instead of getting a double jump, she gets the ability to actually swim in water, uh, which as a knight in heavy armor, it's like, no, you can't do that. Sorry, Pampas. Um, but also she gains the ability to, like, blink jump. Like, I don't know how else to describe it, where, like, instead of double jumping, she'll zoom forward. So you can oh, use that jump or, or something. Yeah. yeah. She's got like a teleport. Yeah. yeah like it's, it's basically Ooh. a teleport. So like you can cross larger gaps with her or you can go through obstacles and it's using that together. But then like, as we got to the later dungeons or well, realms, demon realms that are within the castle, it became very obvious that like this demon realm was meant for Pampas to be doing stuff in. Like, so, like, Dale as Selene could not move around. And then later on, like, every realm after she got that blink jump, like, required you to blink through obstacles. So I was stuck a lot until she got through obstacles. Now, they do that lovely thing where, like, you pull them forward. That is controlled by if you hold the left trigger, you'll teleport to your sibling, regardless of where you are. And nice. that was awesome because Dale was like in those dungeons that are 
specifically for Celine, right? Like it's all swimming. So if you're Pampas, you can't do anything. And I, so I'm like, you stay in the demon realm. You find everything that's there. I'll explore the castle and mark like other demon realms or find items for us or things like that. I'll be grinding up money in a good money grind area. So the fact that we could be doing two unique things at the same time felt so good and so freeing in yeah, a way that, awesome. that like I have never experienced in, in, in a co-op game like this. And like, and it was one of those things where like, all right, I'm certainly gonna... not in a platformer like this. Certainly not. In a, yeah, a, certainly like, not. Metroid like platformers platformer. are like, you have to stick together. And it's, it's not that like when we got to the one where like, it's all double jump. So it's, this is set for Pampas. She's like, I'm going to go do that one where, like, there were this. It so, reminds me of, just because you brought it up earlier in the episode, but it reminds me of when we would do randomizer for Link to the Past, but, like, the, 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 the co-op the weird, stuff, yeah. Well, but, but like, we weren't uh, in the same games, but, like, our items were shared and stuff like that. Like, that kind of thing um, was pretty, That yeah, it, it just, it really reminds me of that kind of, of play. It's like, yeah, I, I didn't pick up the item for this yet, so you're going to need to keep doing what you're doing until you get there. I'll go find another item or I'll go focus on getting some cash so I could buy this or something. Yeah. 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 It is. I mean, and the game was really engaging, but then the worst part of it, because it's not balanced for co-op is the final boss. Uh, so spoilers for Pampas and Celine. If you want to play it, highly recommend it. Um, the, the other big complaint that I, there's not a spoiler complaint, but you should know there is only one save file, which is why I am excited for it to come to Nintendo switch so that each profile can have a save file of the game. Yeah. But yeah, like yeah. right now we have a completed game and I'd love to go through and try it solo and see the difference between playing it co-op the way that we did, but I don't want to lose all of our progress. Okay. Right. Like, so yeah, it's like one of those situations. Otherwise, I'd say get it on Steam right now and we'll go through it. But there's no way to have another save file, which, again, seems very much based on the fact that this was built as an MSX game, right? A computer system from the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. So That's, so, that's yeah. wild, though. But, yeah, but like... then the final boss, uh, you you fight a lich, and it is a direct sequel to that Maze of Gallius game, even though it's like homebrew like unofficial port. So like he references stuff that happens in that game, which I've tried playing that game. It's not as fun, but mostly because like the co-op aspect is not there. And also they only attack forward. Like Pampas has a nice slash and it's, it's impressive how much a slashing sword um, can differ from just, I stab forward. See yeah. the uh, Zelda two <laughs> for examples in popular gaming. But then once you beat the lich, He's like, I have this item that will keep me from dying and no mortal attack will hurt it. Uh, so Celine gets the ability to tag things and then Zeus will strike it with lightning. So clearly that's what you have to do. But in co-op, like as Pampas, I had to strike him a bunch to bring him low enough for Dale to hit him with that lightning bolt. And then we had to hope that Zeus would attack because it's X seconds from when it's marked that a bolt of lightning comes from Zeus. So, like, he resurrects himself. So we ended up having to beat the final boss three times before we could clear it. But then I did it alone, and all I had to do was double jump, switch to Selene, and then hit him one time with the wand. So there is so much in the game that is like, I added co-op because people want to co-op for some reason, but they did not balance that co-op. And, Interesting. and it's really strange because in co-op mode, all achievements are deactivated. You can't get achievements in co-op mode because, quote, co-op makes the game easier. So I didn't want to have that happen. And it's just like weird. Like it's weird what you did here. <laughs> like, I get it. Like, I understand that. But I, not balancing it for co-op, and it, it leads to moments like, if this were regular, I could just do this. But I like, hope it interests the right people, because if the right indie developer plays it and really likes what they've got but sees these kinds of, like, not balanced for co-op issues, I could see this being a thing that, like is the inspiration for somebody five years from now, right? Yeah. We will be playing some game on the switch 
2 that is coming out from somebody that was like, I really like Pompous and Selene, but it wasn't well balanced. So I thought, what if we started with co op in mind? And like, that, that is going to be awesome. This seems like this is going to be a blast too. And I do hope we get to play it someday. But, yeah. but I think the more interesting game is probably going to be the ones that, that come from this kind of idea. And I will say this, this has the potential to be a huge thing yeah. for people for a while. And I wouldn't be surprised if the person who made this game is thinking of that because the final like the the final story stuff that is shown uh hints at there being a Celine follow-up game where after these adventures she becomes the high sorceress of the land and then goes off on an adventure on her own but then also Pampas is crowned the king and he is the most prosperous king in however many years but then years later on his deathbed He's there with his two children, and it says their story will also be told in another game. So I hope that if there is another game where you play as the children of these heroes, that one is actually balanced for co-op. In ways awesome. that, like, I don't, I did not mind that, like, she would have to cross a barrier and then I'd have to warp to her. That was interesting. Yeah, but like, some it, of the um, some of the boss fight stuff could be a little. That boss fight one was annoying because I'm like. Do we just do this? And Dale's like, no, we're not doing it. We're beating it co-op. And when we beat it co-op, it felt so good because, like, I had just found a way to strike him so he got low enough. And at, like, the the highest possible place that Dale could do it, she ended up doing it, and we were victorious. And it felt like a victory because not only did we overcome the challenge of the game, but we overcame the game's limitations to be Same. victorious. Awesome. Yeah. But this is so I mean it's out there. Um I I just want to raise interest in this game. I want to make sure people know about this game cuz it was kind of huge on Twitch for a little bit, but I think it was all sponsored streams. And then the last sponsored stream I saw of it was on Wednesday. This was after Dale and I had completed the game and the person playing was at the final boss and was just like Ugh, I, I'm so frustrated by this and I'm just like, man, that sucks. Like that, like this is what the sponsored stream is showing is just how frustrated this game is making this person. And not in the way where like you get frustrated in like a Dark Souls fight or an Elden Ring fight where like you feel like you're making progress. Like they were just not finding any progress. Right. And they would find like Never solutions to problems. Like, that final boss has a section, and I don't want to spoil it, but it is very much like, look at all of your tools and figure out the tool that solves this problem. Huge props to Dale for figuring it out. Like, like oh, this attack that I, I barely ever use is the easiest way to solve this. And they figured that out, but then they're like, that takes too long. So then they kept fighting it, like, the harder way. So it's like, you know the solution, but you're like, you're actively acting against it like that. And then also kind of bad mouthing the game for being like, why is that the only solution? So like, I want to send some positivity out into the world about Pampas and Celine. And it is rumored to be coming to Nintendo Switch. So when it hopefully does, Seijin and I will definitely be playing it. Sweet. So yeah, there, there's that. Uh, which I guess brings me to my last topic. I, let me sure I've covered everything. Yep. Um, <laughs> Lightyear, the little Pixar movie that could, is now two years old. And in could it cel- though? So what? Could it though? <laughs> yeah, right? Um, that's, that's, that, that's kind of what I want to talk about. But I had never seen it, right? Uh, so with the two year anniversary, I sat down, I watched Lightyear, and I really enjoyed the film. But I have one problem. <laughs> Oh. With the movie. Have you seen Lightyear, C. Jim? Before we yes, go any further? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to take a stab or a no, slash not, at what my I one problem is? To, you want me to try and pick one thing out of a Pixar movie that Devin Decker doesn't like? No, I don't think wow. I can do that. I, but I'm telling you that there's only one thing. Otherwise, a lot of it worked for me. My problem with this film, I need to, I need to bring it up. If you could vamp for me for a little bit. Oh, you need to like literally. I need to look up something real quick that I thought Um, I had, but I don't. I don't know. Yeah. So just like where, just so that everybody, because I don't know if I'm gonna have much to add to this conversation because I, I think it is a, 
I think it's a middling like Pixar film. They've got a few of those that are the ones that just you know people kind of almost even forget about. Um, I think like early examples of that are and somebody out there is going to be mad at me for this, but it's true. Bugs Life, Bugs right? Life. is oh. a is a purposely perfectly serviceable fun film. Generally, afterwards, not much is ever brought up about it, right? And I think Lightyear is the same way. I think it was really fun when I saw it. I think it was like a cool like thing to to witness, and then haven't really talked to anybody else about it since. And it's not even that I don't know people that have seen it because like even Devin, you know, is talking about watching it now i know plenty of people with kids that they see every pixar movie i know plenty of people that get super into movies that watch them it's just not one of those ones that's very like there's not enough going on in it to make it cool and new and exciting sometimes there's some really cool space effects and some really cool light effects i will say um but other than that there's not much about about like ear that i really think really breaks the mold i also i love the idea of like thinking about it as like a movie that would come out in like in front of andy to watch of his character right and that kind of thing which i think a lot of people had a really hard time kind of wrapping their head around that that being kind of the, the concept but it clearly is right like it's like this is clearly the kind of movie that would be made within the Pixar universe, right? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Um, and that's my problem, is what you just brought up. Uh, because it starts with the opening text, the Star Wars-style like text that opens this movie, is in 1995, 1995, a boy named Andy got a Buzz Lightyear toy for his birthday. It was from his favorite movie, this is that movie. And there ain't no fucking way that Lightyear, as a film, would have been made that way in 1995. In in the Pixar universe? Even in, in the... In a pi- universe like, in which we acknowledge magic and space and all that? You, you, you're going to take issue with the way the film would have been made in 1995? I do. I, I, and it's not, it's not even like just... It is so much... 2020s sensibilities that are put into this film and we haven't seen anything from the world that reflects that if it was just this is a move this is the origin of buzz lightyear movie and it didn't have that framing device no, instead we've seen actually kind of the opposite we've seen a boy in 1995 that is into a black and white puppet cowboy show right yeah like it's i don't I don't know. I, like, I think, I, but I think that's just as weird. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. because it's in the other direction. <laughs> like, right. But it's, it's just, I don't feel like that the film, well, here's the thing, right? You have this unique opportunity to make an animated film in the style of 1995. You're basically granted the free will to make a period 1995 animated movie. And I feel like they instead were like, we're going to we're gonna make a 2020s movie and just say it released in 1995. Yeah. And it's, and it's I, just... I, no, I, I think it's fair criticism. Like I said, like, it, like it's not like a perfect movie by any stretch. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's not a movie that I really have much that I can say has... Like, it's not that it doesn't have redeeming qualities. It doesn't have anything about it that really offends me either. It's just, it's, it's uh, um, you know, it's, it, it hits me a lot like... Um, uh, what were those really wild ones? Area 51. Do you remember that one? There was like an animated one that was all about the guy that lands on the planet full of aliens. And yeah, like the joke yeah. is that it's an alien invasion film, but he's yeah, a human but and he's everybody the else one, is yes. aliens. Yeah, like, it's a, like, like stuff like that. Where, well, the um, weird thing about where, that where, is like, there's a Buzz Lightyear of Star Command episode that is exactly that premise. That was right. awesome. Booster but lands on we the planet of Grays. And... Yeah, we were dipping our toe into that like sci-fi world in, in kids' movies because we also had um, uh, monsters versus aliens, like and things like that. Like we, there's a there's a five to ten year period there where like people were just making weird sci-fi movies for kids, and I and I love that shit. Right. But Buzz Lightyear didn't do anything to like elevate above the rest of them in that regard. So it's it's one of those rare moments where you're watching a Pixar film and thinking they're just kind of going with the crowd and like you don't really see that it, you know cars 2 is a really big example of that for a lot of people is they feel like it's very much a manufactured pixar movie which is kind of like not what they want from pixar films um you and know one meanwhile that i like love cars says, too because it builds out the world and like all the questions i had after cars have been answered but there are a lot of people who are like i don't need to know i don't need to know these things yeah, that's not that's not what people care yeah, about. That's in that, not in that what regard. people care about. But it's what I, but it's why I liked it. But it is one of those situations where, like I think that like the time travel convolution of uh, spoilers for Lightyear. I'm just gonna say it. it's a two year old movie. If you haven't seen it, there's probably a reason. But the fact that like Buzz 
time traveled from the future to make sure that the Buzz, who we follow for the whole movie, like would not be captured so that he could get the crystal and then time travel back further to avoid the inciting incident of the entire film. Like, that's levels of convolution that I think in, like, 1995 we weren't putting into kids' movies. Like, I think that's a fine thing now. I feel like our our entertainment has kind of caught up with, like, kids understand multiverses and things. Also kind of the twist reveal of the Lego Movie 2, but yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never seen Lego Movie 2, but that tracks. Uh, but again, <laughs> but, but also, like, that's a movie made now. Like, think about the kids' movies you saw in 1995. I mean, one of them was fucking Toy Story, right? There's no weird time dilution in that movie. In, in a kid's film. Can you think of a kid's film that, like, was he- covering this heavy... We're back. <laughs> what? We're back. I don't know. We're back at Dinosaur Story. He brings dinosaurs forward and gives them brain things. And there's time... Yeah, yes, there is time travel and weird science behind it, yes. <laughs> right, but, like, I guess it's... But the dinosaurs... Well, the dinosaurs do become bad guys, but the dinosaurs don't fight bad guy versions of themselves. That's the other thing, is I feel like if this movie were made in 1995, it the film's pretty toyetic, right? Like, socks, as an example, of a thing that, like, kids would want the cat toy from the Lightyear movie in 1995. So the fact that in the entire Toy Story, like, universe, we've never seen a socks toy is fucking crazy. The fact that the only figure that seems to have been released from this movie is Buzz Lightyear is crazy. And that's coming from like unless, a toy collector in 95. We're making an assumption that we're making an assumption that the movie was popular, but we know very famously at this time that there's a lot of movies being made of popular franchises that have toys, but the movies themselves are not necessarily the bit that people love. Uh, that's true. Think about the idea of like Super Mario Bros the movie. <laughs> like like that comes out and first of all it's nothing like Super Mario Brothers like the TV show or the or the video games. It, and like the toys from it are not going to look anything like the toys that we want that we actually want like in a weird way i think they nail the idea of the movie studio trying to capitalize on a popular thing that this kid who's who's too young to really kind of like get that he's being marketed to the whole time like loves it just like we love the super mario brothers movie but the rest of the world pretty much gets that it's pretty garbo <laughs> So then, but then that problem is like, there are so, I guess there are, using now toy logic, when they go to Al's toy barn, and there are literally thousands of Buzz because, Lightyear action figures available. But it's not, but it's, but they're not movie accurate ones. Right, they're not those film are, accurate. Those are more related to the TV show that we know about, and, and the video games that we know about. Yes. That's just it. It's like, yes, there are successful toys that aren't related to the movie but i also don't but the part we don't like to think about (laughs) but i guess what i'm saying now is that there aren't successful toys right the fact that he has a wall of buzz lightyear action figures the fact that the same basic figure they're trying to move for completionists by adding a fucking utility belt like yeah buzz lightyear is not popular see i'm so happy we're having this conversation because like it's extremely popular when he pulls that buzz lightyear out at the party all of the guys lose their shit that he got one right but again i don't know that could be the fact of like it's kids that film could not be for kids first of all is it an animated film or is it a live action film that's a question (laughs) that i have because Uh It doesn't look like animated films of 1995, right? Like, no, I think it's supposed to be considered to be a live action a, film within the world of Pixar. Which I, which that I love. I absolutely love that fact of it because then it's not computer animation in 1995. I it is just think, what they yeah, look like. Yeah, exactly. I, I just think that this that is the problem that this movie really has. Is it really does such a poor job establishing this concept of it being this not representation of the Buzz Lightyear, the toy that we all know and love, but rather the phenomena of Buzz Lightyear that breeds the toy, right? Like that whole idea that the reason Andy has the toy is because of this thing that, yeah, it's not a... It, it's not a one-for-one one understanding of what we know about Buzz Lightyear because everything we know about Buzz Lightyear comes from a toy. this version of him that yeah. is not this version in the movie. And, like, 
I love all of this, this layer of like upon layers upon layers of watching that. I really enjoy that. And I really think it's a really cool thing that they did. And I, again, don't hate the movie. The ways in which people just like turned their nose up without ever really like bothering to put their head, like they understand what this movie was. Like it was a huge risk and it did not pay off. And like, I don't know. Like, I still think it was worth it. I still think it was a cool thing that I... they did and they get to say they did it. And yeah, not every movie's going to be a success i guess yeah. it's just it's such a wild thing to see hear people get like adamantly like upset about pixar making movies like buzz lightyear because it's like it, it's one of the artsiest things they've actually done yeah it really recently. is it like it is and it's just one of those situations where like i'd be fine if it was this is the reboot of that movie and like mm -hmm. so like it's for this it's just setting in a 95 right like the mental gymnastics that i had to do and i'm glad that i got to talk to you about this this is why i wanted to bring it because i knew that you would have that like you'd agree that it's a live action film maybe it's, it's not the he man it yeah. is the dolph lundgren he man <laughs> like yeah. it is and then live action films but if this is the establishment of the character right Andy sees this movie maybe too young, maybe his absentee father. Maybe that's the reason they got the divorce is that Andy's dad took him to go see Lightyear and Andy's mom was like, that's fucking it. We're done. <laughs> right. Oh, even even sad. pregnant with Molly. Holy sad. fuck. No, but no. But I feel like it's not a movie that is made for children. And then Andy goes and sees it. And then it's exciting because of that, like, forbidden factor of it right like oh my god you saw gremlins and now you have a mogwai toy i'd lose my fucking craziness at a friggin' birthday party where a kid got a mogwai if it was 1984 and like you, your parents let you see gremlins that's rated r and it's like yeah it's my favorite movie right but then from the popularity of the toy it spins off into the video game and the buzz lightyear of star command cartoon that we know that are definitely geared towards children a la the real ghostbusters and that's why the yeah, Zerg... ghostbusters is another really good yeah. one yes ghostbusters, ghostbusters is... is another really good example of like yeah. ghostbusters 2 famously not a well-loved film at the time of its release because that it was, was too kitty after the, the show yeah <laughs> Like that, that's exactly it. So, I mean, Ghostbusters is that. So, and then that explains why maybe we don't do a Zerg figure because Zerg is scary or like kids don't want to get like the evil buzz figure. But then when we retool this movie to be a cartoon, we add in Zerg is just a robot and he looks less menacing. He has the cape. And that's why the figure of Zerg that we see in Toy Story 2 is based on his appearance in Star in, in a little Buzz Lightyear of Star Command as opposed to the film. Like it this is awesome. Sajin, I'm this is why I brought this topic. I'm so happy it's the topic we're ending on. Cause yeah, it like it, it is one of those situations where like this is the only thing that's hard for me to swallow. But the gymnastics I did is that A, yeah, no, it's probably based on a live action film, not an animated film. So mm -hmm. we put it that way, completely different, right? Completely different world. One of the things that Dale pointed out was like the diversity in the cast. That is totally wiped away because we had the Burger King Kids Club. We had Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Like diversity existed in the 90s. The fact that everybody thinks it's a new thing is very strange. Like that is yeah. not a thing to like look at and be like, oh, I don't know if it'd be three minorities who'd be on his team. But it's like, no, it definitely would be. In 1995, that is really easy to swallow for me. But it's more trying to understand this level of entertainment and the plot. The plot of it is very convoluted. But again, if it's a live action film, more made for adults than for children, that a 10 year old think, Andy I just really happens to see. I really think the Super Mario Brothers movie is really the is a really good example. Like, yeah, like look at look at how weirdly stupid the plot to that movie is for them to try and figure out how to get two plumbers from New York into this magical world that then when you get there isn't even really fun to look at. It's just basically Blade Runner with more lizards <laughs> and, and less robots um, or replicants to use the term. I guess, but the problem that I have with Super Still Mario Brothers, <laughs> the fungus man, the king is everywhere. Uh, Elvis is everywhere, man. Oh, Mojo Nixon, R.I.P. I do miss you. Uh, it comes upon me like every once in a while and usually not while I'm recording, but you know what? This would do it. But I don't believe that Buzz Lightyear as a property existed before this film. 
That is the only I, difference between it and Super Mario Brothers. I do think there is a l- little bit of an understanding that the TV show has been going for a while because they talk about, maybe this might be two, but they talk about a number of episodes that's pretty extravagant, don't they? Like, uh, I've watched all 100 episodes or something like that. Or did like? I think that's about uh, the but, Woody show. I don't think that's idea, about Buzz Star this. Command. No matter what, the idea of we are going to introduce this movie alongside a TV show, alongside a toy line, and we're going to just tell you it's been your favorite thing for the last five years, even though it hasn't existed. That's, so that's also not 90s. unheard of. <laughs> that's so fucking 90s. I just feel like this movie exists. I mean, Cowboys of Moon Mesa. We opened this show yeah. up talking about how they don't even bother with an origin story episode. They just give you the song, and if you watch the very first episode of that show, you'd be forgiven for thinking, oh, I must have missed the pilot. Right. No, no pilot. They're just the, the you saw the pilot was the theme song. Magic mm-hmm. Comet mutated all of them with right. space radiation. No, yeah, I, th- I do think that there is a sense that it is a completely manufactured fandom for sure. But I think that's part of the whole story of Toy Story in that, like, the history behind Woody and, like, what he represents and then becomes for... for so what he represents on the larger scale and then what he, what he means to Andy on the micro scale is, like, part and parcel, like, the whole point that's of the whole point of the Buzz series, Lightyear yeah. coming in and being this, like, forced upon manufactured fun... And, and this idea that, like, actually that kind of fun is still fun, so we don't get to tell kids that this is a better fun or, or not a better fun. Like, both of them are both things that a, a kid can play with. Is like, the entire concept of that first movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess um I might have to do a deep dive and see what they talk about the Buzz Lightyear franchise uh, in 1 and 2. Yeah, I can't uh, verify but, for sure. You might be right. That movie might be the very first instance I think the movie is Lightyear the first instance of his existence. And then... Because it's really weird that, like, but now putting in the well, fact now we're that. we into, like, Ace Ventura territory. Yeah. Yeah. Max, right. right? Yeah. You're like, hey, let's put this movie out and then also have cartoon shows to go along and with it. And toys that go not. along with it. And. Right. Yeah. It's a whole other kettle of fish. Maybe it existed as a comic book. And then the boom. I mean, it's the Rocketeer. Lightyear is the fucking Rocketeer. And then th- that totally fucking works. Because that exists as a property. They try to invent it as this big budget film. That like kids will like it, but it's kind of more for adults because they know no, who the, the Rocketeer wild is. Would be that it would be something like a serial from the 1940s yeah, exactly. or 50s that fell out of fashion, like the Shadow. So, but but the whole story or this whole idea of Woody having this really deep background and Buzz being this like new thing, and then you find out in Toy Story Five that actually there was a Buzz Lightyear that was older than Woody. Yeah, Buzz Lightyear was essentially fucking Flash Gordon in the old <laughs> serials, right? Hanging out with the goddamn that, Phantom, be, yeah, and then after Batman old, 89 the hits. To the last four movie idea like ideally that batman fucking 89 still happened in the toy story universe the pixar universe because it's all connected right otherwise you wouldn't do the adam sandler cinematic universe right plugging the other stuff right here all right batman 89 exists in the pixar universe so of course all these old serials are scooped up and turned into series so then late year they scoop up that old serial of Buzz Lightyear. This is Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. And it's why he fucking narrates. Holy fucking shit. This fits in so well with all of the 90s movies we've looked at. Because that's it's what it is. It's almost like they actually did a pretty decent job with what they were trying to do with the movie. I just think their goal with the movie was not one that necessarily resonates with a lot of people, which is unfortunate. It resonates with us, clearly, but oh, like, clear. I think that they tried a thing and succeeded at it. It's just that the thing that they were trying was was what they were kind of lacking, right? Like, is, the, is that was the thing that not everybody loved. And that's, that's a shame. Yeah. Because, like, when an artist goes out and tries and attempts a thing, and it works, and that's great. I think that should be celebrated. Even if I don't love a genre of music, even if I don't love a style of art, if an artist succeeds in that realm, that's awesome. Like, that's fantastic to watch happen. It's 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 amazing to watch somebody perform at the height of whether or not you're into that thing, right? The idea, though, that there's a lot of people that try that shit that it doesn't hit, like, that... <laughs> Like that happens, and it's just it sucks it happened for Pixar, but here we are. <laughs> I mean, I I am very because like my one problem is now completely erased, and I'm glad I brought it here because I knew that a discussion with you about this 
could possibly frame it in a way like because I had little theories, but like, oh, my God. And yet what a fucking path for Toy Story 5 to take is the fact that like, oh, no, Buzz Lightyear has existed since 1919. It's just I, that it fell out I, of favor. For the record, I 100% do not think they're going to go anywhere near oh, that. Never but if they it, do, right? that would be wild. Well, especially the fact that the, the Lightyear movie was not some beloved fucking thing. Right. If Lightyear had made more than twenty six thousand dollars in profits, uh, twenty six million dollars in profits. So there was a two million dollar <laughs> film and it made two hundred twenty six million dollars at the box office. If it had d- made four hundred million dollars, then it's beloved. And then that yeah, this is what we focus on is Buzz finding out that he has a whole like depth to his character that he was unaware of, a la mm-hmm. Toy Story 2. Especially since Toy Story 5 is happening, right? Like, they've already announced it, but mm-hmm. Woody can't fucking be there, right? Because he left to be with Bo Peep? So, like, a Buzz-centric movie being, like, him not knowing his identity without Woody and then finding that identity out? <laughs> like... <Yeah. laughs> I'd be wild. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what they do oh, with the five. Man. I didn't know what they I, would do with the four, and that was surprising. Yeah, so. and four was, I, I liked four. I really enjoyed what four did, and I didn't think I was going to. And again, maybe I might be a minority on that one, too. But So, like, um, and um, just, just because we're talking about Pixar, we should also point out, because we brought this up, uh, Inside Out 2 is sitting at like $650 million. Yeah, weekend, Inside apparently. Out 2 may have been the savior of fucking Hollywood. We won't know. Um, I know that they had a really good opening weekend. We'll have that information. I don't think, I don't think it's going to be a savior. Anybody that thinks that this represents some turn for Hollywood is out of their fucking minds. We have yet another example of if there is a particular movie people want to go see, they will go see it. But generally, people are just not going out to theaters right now. Right. So, well, like, it's awesome. I'm glad this movie is doing super well. But I do not think we can look at this movie and think, oh, maybe people are going to go back to the theaters on the reg now. No, no. I think they're going to turn around now and not go to movies for another two months. <laughs> right. I think that no one's going to go see. No, for another month, right? Nobody's going to see movies until fucking Deadpool and Wolverine. Right? Yeah, that's true. Maybe that, Twisters. That is maybe one of those ones like, that might pull people out. Yeah. I don't think Twisters has legs. I, like, I will call that right here, right now. I have talked about Twisters with one other person in my life that's excited about Twisters, and everybody else was like, yeah, I, apparently it's a sequel to a thing. What? <laughs> I have tickets for Twisters opening day, and then I'm going to go see Twisters and come home and play the NES World Championship Switch game, and it's going to be the greatest day ever. Ever. While playing Twister. <laughs> well, yeah, right? But, but, but uh, we'll have Twister on the floor. Huh, oh, Mother Jubba. I mean, that's the other thing, right? I just think, like, the Twister brand is, is brand is just polluted. And that's a problem. But, yeah, no. Uh, we'll see. That Savior of Hollywood thing, that is what people are calling Inside Out to. And that is, like, that's an overreach, I think. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it's the Savior for Pixar, Right. And the fear that like they were going to fold that and get rid of that is done. It proves but it proves what everybody has been saying with Pixar at Pixar and about Pixar for the last five years is that Disney has just been mishandling the marketing and releasing of those movies. Yes. That generally those movies would have been doing fine if Disney had just done right by them that's true and disney and and that and that had and that was and we talked about this as this kind of being this experiment for them of them coming out and saying okay we're going to guarantee this like this hundred day run in theaters and see what it does and if it does well then then we'll eat our our crow and we'll 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 you know reconfigure our concepts about marketing and all that and then lo and behold it is so now i'm curious to see if they actually do change their tune on what they do with pixar movies going forward I have a sneaky suspicion that being a company so focused on money, they won't. That this is just going to be a nice little feather on their in their cap as they go about still mistreating this company. <laughs> right. But we'll see. We'll yeah, see. We're only eight days into that hundred day promise, right? I mean, but, so but we'll even see what's then, up in ninety two days. Right, but even then, if the point was that by saying outwardly we are not going to release this on Disney Plus suddenly generated enough people to go to the theater for it right like you can say that whether or not that like it has made it it has made its money it has proved its point and and part of that was in saying we are not going to put this on disney plus for three months 
Yeah. That it, like there it is. That's your proof. You come out when you say, "Hey, this is not going to be available to you in your home for three months," and so people make an effort to go out to the theater to see it. Like that's exactly what everybody's been saying, and Disney has said it's like fingers in its ears for some reason. Yeah, and I, I, and also the other thing about Inside Out Two is that the big hubbub and rumor is that Pixar, instead of doing like weirdly personal or artistic films are now going to do films that are like safe, which is disappointing, especially in light of a watching Lightyear, But then this discussion we had on Lightyear, where like, maybe it was just too big an artistic swing, um, for other people. Right. As we look at it as like, just what was happening in the nineties and it trying mm-hmm. to actually, reflect like 90 cinema not just as an animated film right it never says this is the animated film that andy saw this is the film that andy saw and that's what they look like in freaking toy story right so there's no reason that i would not think that it is a live action film mm-hmm. so I don't, oof, you have opened my eyes Sejan, and i appreciate that are you ready now to use these last few minutes of the episode to open the eyes of our audience as to what to expect from our next episode, see, Jim? Oh, are we are we are we giving a little bit of a tease? I think uh, we should yeah. give a little bit of a tease. Uh, no, um, next ep- next episode is a little bit of an out of time and space episode. It, it's a it's a time capsule, I guess. Not a not in the truest sense because it's like we, a we wanted to do something pod. special. It's like a time pod. Yeah, it's a yeah. scheduled episode. It, there, there's the like time capsules we really record out of space and time, uh, so that like it can stand on its own. Uh, this one we knew it was happening. Sejin has alluded to in a couple of episodes that he is in wedding mode right now, so he's just going to a bunch of weddings, and one of those weddings coincided with our recording. I think I met some wedding crashers at the last one. Awesome. I, uh, I don't think I even told you this off mic, but there was definitely a family of people that throughout the whole day, I kept hearing both the family of the bride and the family of the groom try and get a beat on how they knew anybody and their tactful like ignorance of those questions and just and just being like, anyway, I'm going to go back over and grab some more raspberry parfait. It's like, okay. I, and I don't think by the end of that wedding, anybody figured out who the hell they were. Uh, I got to go uh, spray some Visine into that fucking asshole's drink. So uh, I'll catch you later. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. That's a, I, I mean, like, imagine if it was Owen Wilson and freaking I can't remember Vince Vaughn. And that's just what they do with their lives now. No, that's cool. That's interesting. But Sejan has been wedding man, right? So our next official episode will be our very special episode on Spider-Man 2. So you do know the required reading. I'm very excited to talk about Spider-Man 2. I've been excited since we released our Spider-Man very special episode, which you can go back and listen to. uh, That was released uh, back in May of 2022 for the 20th anniversary of Spider-Man. And even if you don't listen to the full episode, listen to like the last five minutes where I just butcher hero by Nickelback. (laughs) Um, But so I'm excited to talk about Spider-Man too, especially since here's a little spoiler. I haven't seen it since I saw it that first time in theaters. So interesting to revisit. And I got some stories. Next episode. Right. But the next regular episode that you'll be getting Monday, July 1st uh, is a time. It's a scheduled episode. And CJ, I mean, I, I feel like you need to say the words. It was your brainchild, your baby. I was just the willing participant. We'll be looking to, to put together a Mountain Dew tier list. Yes. Yes. We are judging all of the Mountain Dew we could get our grubby little hands on. And I. Look, I've been talking with the higher ups at YouTube, and the numbers all point to that when the channel is flailing like ours is, what you need to do is you need to start doing tier list episodes. You need to start really diving in. And if you can get that into like a into like a brand everybody knows and loves and holds dear to their heart and probably goes to sleep with in their belly every night, a la Mountain Dew, then uh, you know you're in you're in good shape. I know that we're playing characters right now, but I have never felt more strong about our show. <laughs> <laughs> so for you to call us a flailing channel, really, like that cut me deep, bro. <laughs> that cut me deep. I don't know. I don't know if you've looked around, but I don't think we're actually on a YouTube channel, so I think it's okay. No, we are. Of acceptance that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just decided to go real sad with it. <laughs> but yes, so Mountain Dew tier list um, recorded. So if we don't address things like that, but also in this last moment, Siege and I am 
not really <laughs> offering a challenge. I'm not throwing down a challenge, but I'd like to go back to something that we did uh, during the weird strike times on this show. And I'd like to give us a task for our next, next episode. So episode 390, which we'll be releasing on July 8th. I want you and I to put together a summer playlist. Five yeah. songs from you, Seijin. Five so songs. That'll be a 10-song playlist that we throw together. Now, are we talking like a, like a 2024 Summer Jams has to be from this year? Or are we talking like... like uh, so, okay, so because we're doing it, one song has to be a 2024 song. Okay. That is the thing. I mean, like, if yeah, that's it. Yeah, one song needs to be twenty twenty four. Uh, the rest of it, it's fair game. Um, but it needs to be something that, like, if you were at the barbecue, right? You're hanging out at a pool party, and this is what's the background noise. You're feeling like, man, it's fucking summertime. <laughs> so yeah, that's what yeah. we're doing. So we'll have that for the episode after our Mountain Dew tier list episode. Uh, you'll get to join us as we share our 10 song summer playlist featuring at least two songs that are from 2024. Um, and we'd love to hear from you about that as well, because that's what it is. So um, if you want to join in on the conversation, uh, we are going to be incorporating the discord a little bit more, as you saw with the supplemental material from the, is this the red Hulk or the green Hulk or sugar free Hulk or zero sugar Hulk, as I think his proper title would be. Um, join the Discord. Again, there are invite, invite links to join on anywhere we're at social media. So on Twitter, formerly X, or X, formerly Twitter. I'm not sure what you're supposed to call it. Um, Facebook, that's there. Or you can always send us an email directly to the say report at gmail.com. Check that every day, and we will provide it there. Or if you're like a friend of ours and you just want a, um, an invite, contact us on discord right you know how to do that already so we can send you an invite that way um but yeah i think that's everything uh we'll see you for a very special episode this thursday and then you'll get to enjoy us talking about mountain dew uh next monday and then we'll be back for like real scheduled content uh anything else you want to say season before we send this one away uh no uh, i look forward to uh to talk to everybody over the next couple of uh, episodes about some pretty specific shit, and then I can't wait till we get back to the weird shit. Yeah, right? That, that's why we're a show about everything. <laughs> with that in mind, William, please bring us home. Thank you for listening to the Say Report with your host Devin Decker and Stephen Serwick. Please follow the guys on Twitter and Facebook by searching for The Say Report, and you can always subscribe on your podcast channel so this is delivered straight to you and you can enjoy it every week. With apologies to your mother, we'll see you next time.